Εδώ μιλάω εγώ όμως. Οκ, let's uh, please all be seated. We can start the seminar today. Like we said, this is the second international seminar in Greece after the one which was held in Portugal a few months ago. And uh, it has to do with uh, the Interreg Med program called Sus Towns. This program is focused on enhancing sustainable tourism attraction in small, fascinating med towns and promotes the rejuvenation of the small, fascinating tourist destinations involved in the pilot implementation of the, of the partners who participate in this project. This project is based on the exchange of know-how and good practices and by developing sustainable tourism action plans as suggested in the methodology of the project. This international seminar, which we welcome everybody here today, has to do aiming at the present and dissemination of the methodologies, practices and tools tested and validated in the sustainable pilot regions of the people who participate in this, in this uh, uh, as, as partners. Uh, I will speak in Greek now. I want to mention people who are uh, here to honor us in this, in this uh, event. Έχουμε τον κύριο Φάλα Κωνσταντίνο, ο οποίος είναι περιφερειακός σύμβουλος της περιφέρειας κεντρικής Μακεδονίας. Είναι και αντιπρόεδρος της Ανατολικής ΑΕ. Έχουμε τον κύριο Χρήστο Βογιατζή. Είναι αντιδήμαρχος τεχνικών υπηρεσιών του Δήμου Θερμαϊκού και είναι μέλος του ΔΣ της Ανατολικής ΑΕ. Και έχουμε και τον κύριο Νίκο Αυγερινό, ο οποίος θα μιλήσει στη συνέχεια. Είναι, ο δήμαρχος, είναι αντιδήμαρχος του Δήμου Αριστοτέλη και έχει και μια παρουσίαση αργότερα που θα την κάνει ο ίδιος. Οπότε, για την παρούσα φάση, θα ήθελα να δώσω το λόγο στον κύριο Στυλιανό Βαλιάνο, ο οποίος θα συνδεθεί μέσω Zoom για να κάνει ένα χαιρετισμό. Είναι έτοιμος? Δεν είναι έτοιμος. Να προχωρήσω στον κύριο Νικόλαο Νικολόπουλο, ο οποίος εκπροσωπεί το Δήμο Βόλβης. Αν είναι έτοιμος ο κύριος Νικολόπουλος να μπει μέσω Zoom. Αν όχι, να προχωρήσουμε στον πρόεδρό μας, τον κύριο Σοκάτη Σαμαρά. <laughs> Ελάτε. Ωραία. Ακούγουμε. Ναι, ναι. Καλημέρα σε όλους. Με άνω τέτο και σώνο σινιόρι και σώνο βενούτι τα Ιταλία. Και σώνο η λίδερ τελ προγράμμα. Αλόρα μπεν βενούτι, αν και λόρ. Νοντοστάντε λα κοιτά, λα ρόστρα κοιτά una città calda, eh, non so, qualcuno ha portato freddo, <ride> oggi è abbastanza, abbastanza freddo. Allora, <coughs> buon, calimera che sta ellenica, sta a po' che sta con metafrasti. E quello come so Crati Samara, si mi è proprio di Santo Lichisi. Non mi sono tenuto il primo crono. Και είμαι και αντιδήμαρχο πολιοδομία στο Δήμο Θέρμη. Θα μεταφράσει. Α, είναι κατευθείαν. Οκ. 
Λοιπόν, ο αναπτυξιακό οργανισμό ΟΤΑ Ανατολική ΑΕ έχει συσταθεί το 1996 αξιοποιώντας το θεσμικό πλαίσιο της αυτοδιοίκησης με στόχο την υποστήριξη της βιώσιμης ανάπτυξης στην ευρύτερη περιοχή με έδρα το Δήμο Θέρμης. Η Περιφέρεια Κεντρικής Μακεδονίας, δέκα δήμοι των Περιφερειακών Ενωτήτων Θεσσαλονίκης και Χαλκιδικής, τα τρία παραγωγικά επιμελητήρια της πόλης μας, το Εθνικό Κέντρο Έρευνας και Τεχνολογικής Ανάπτυξης, το ΕΚΕΤΑ, και συνεταιρισμοί στην Ανατολική Θεσσαλονίκη συνιστούν τη μετοχική σύνθεση της εταιρεία. Η, η συμμετοχή της Ανατολική ΑΕ σε συγχρηματοδοτούμενα συ, <coughs> έργα είναι ιδιαίτερα σημαντική για τους Δήμους της ευρύτερης περιοχής γιατί συμβάλλει μέσα από την ανταλλαγή καλών πρακτικών και τεχνογνωσίας στην προώθηση της βιώσιμης ανάπτυξης αλλά και στην ε, από κοινού διαχείριση προβλημάτων που καθημερινά αντιμετωπίζουν οι πόλοι μας στην Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση. Σήμερα είμαστε εδώ παρόντες στο Διεθνές Σεμινάριο που διοργανώνεται στα πλαίσια του έργου Σόν Στάνς ε, όπου έχει ως αντικείμενο την προώθηση του βιώσιμου τουρισμού. Το μοντέλο του μαζικού τουρισμού είναι δεδομένο ότι has some consequences for the environment and for the cities where it develops. The recent pandemic and the climate change, the climate crisis, create the need for investigating new forms of tourism development. So through this project, we have the possibility to record the development potential that exists in every Mediterranean country of the partnership in order to um, approach, uh, in order to develop a tourist uh, uh, development in the small, small towns in a way that uh, will preserve uh, the specificities of each uh, region. The methodology, the methodology of the project gives us the possibility and the opportunity to investigate new board models through the social uh, cons consulting. Based on the know-how of the project and cooperation with the municipalities of Aristotelis, we drafted four-year action plans that are axed on, based on the following axes, management and development of management of tourist destinations, hospitality, tourist heritage and identity, natural, her natural heritage and environmental quality and crisis management. At the same time, within the framework of the project, uh, the methodology of the sustainable, sustainable tourism uh, development is transferred to 15 municipalities all, all across Greece, because uh, the, to, the sustainable tourism is a, is a great challenge for the post-COVID era. That is what Mrs. Mrs. Gereku, the Secretary General of the Greek National Tourism Organization, uh, mentioned during an interview early this year. What is positive is that uh, the sustainable tourism principles start affecting uh, the uh, uh, local and regional policies. And um, to conclude, I would like to thank uh, the guests uh, from the Mediterranean countries uh, that participate in this uh, project for uh, their cooperation to date. The municipalities of Volvi and Aristotelis um, uh, who uh, are with us from the scratch. I'd like to thank particularly the guests uh, from uh, outside the Saloniki and Greece, all those who are here uh, either live or via uh, Zoom. And I'd like to wish a great success to the works of this conference and have a pleasant stay in the Saloniki. <laughs> I'd like to thank Mr. Samaras for his kind words uh, when he talked about pro the project and Anatoliki. 
Mr. Samaras has always been a, a fervent supporter. And now I'd like to give the floor to Mrs. Stylianos Vajanos, who is the mayor at Aristotelis municipality. Are we connected? Yes, can you hear me and can you see me? Yes, there you are. Good morning to everyone. It's a great honor for the municipality of Aristoteles to participate in this excellent initiative and in this important project. In my turn, I'd like to welcome all our foreign guests who flew from the whole of Europe to this beautiful country. I'd like to welcome you to the land of Aristoteles. You were hosted here yesterday and you were able to have a taste of the world unique characteristics of this uh, uh, land. Uh, this uh, land uh, is uh, the birthplace of uh, uh, great Aristoteles. Uh, his thoughts uh, um, have been uh, governing our thought for centuries now and touches upon all scientific fields. Additionally, nowhere else in the world uh, we can find uh, uh, the symbol of orthodoxy church. This is uh, the holy mountain, which is found in our municipality, the municipality of Aristoteles. Uh, Mount Athos uh, is uh, the, a unique uh, characteristic uh, for Greek orthodoxy. In addition to that, uh, here in our municipality, we can find uh, excellent uh, crystal clear sea, a lot of beautiful base uh, and uh, a lot of forests uh, and nice uh, uh, um, villages uh, with uh, excellent architecture. In this way, we can find uh, a, a great di diversification uh, in our municipality. We feel very proud to participate in this project. The objective of this project is uh, to gather the experiences, uh, to find the best practices, uh, uh, to promote uh, an area and to disseminate them. The municipality of Aristoteles has been carrying out um, an integrated uh, project uh, for tourism development uh, with 18 different programs. Uh, the wine tourism project, the walking tourism, the pilgrimage tourism project. Uh, our deputy mayor, Mr. Avgerinos, will talk to you about uh, pilgrimage tourism uh, further on. All these under the umbrella of sustainable growth and development, uh, which is uh, the program carried out by Anatoliki. Anatoliki has been working really hard and has been doing excellent work on this issue. In my view, this project is extremely significant and important because beyond uh, the concern and the care that is taken care in, in order to enhance the idea of tourism movement, this project mobilizes and activates all participants and stakeholders to include whatever is necessary in order to have the correct tourism development. This includes our infrastructure, our services, of course, the beauty and the cultural heritage is there culture uh, and tradition is there, but besides this, uh, we all realize that what is necessary is uh, uh, safety, good roads, uh, cleanliness, uh, we ha should have waste management. Uh, all these are, are characteristics and features uh, that lead to sustainable growth and development uh, of the region and uh, of the great uh, tourism flows uh, that arrive here. Therefore, it is a triple concern for us, infrastructure, services, and of course, uh, promotion and uh, development of tourism. All these um, 
are re re written down, recorded and included in a detailed way in the project that we are participating. That's why I believe that at the end of this process, procedure, we will uh, be having a very important guidebook for sustainable growth. This manual and handbook and guidebook uh, will show us how we should develop our area in a sustainable manner um, concerning tourism that will facilitate the life of citizens, of local citizens uh, in the long run. With these thoughts, I would like uh, to extend my greetings to your uh, seminar today. I believe that this seminar will um, gather and collect uh, all the experiences of the participants. I believe that at the end of this pro program, we will all have become wiser and we will all have exchanged experiences and practices that will make us better uh, if we want uh, to exercise uh, our duties and tasks uh, concerning tourism. Thank you very much uh, for inviting us. May you have a fruitful seminar today. Thank you. Mr. Valianos, the mayor of Aristoteles municipality. His remarks are, are, have always been very precise and helpful to our effort. I'd like now to give the floor to Mr. Nikolos Nikolopoulos from Volvi municipality. What should we do? Should we carry on with our prog uh, agenda or should we wait for Mr. Nikolopoulos? The moderator is asking. So we should better carry on. Thanks to Mrs. Papa Ioana Algiro from the region of Central Macedonia. Mrs. Algiro presents actions of the region of Central Macedonia for sustainable tourism. Please, Mrs. Algiro, you have the podium. Zoom, ne, zoom. Zoom. Zoom podium. <laughs> Begin. Good morning. Can you see me? We can hear you, but we can't see you, the moderator is saying. Now we can see you as well. No. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting us. My name is uh, Papa Ioano Argiro, and I work uh, at the, the Tourism Directorate of the region of Central Macedonia. Our region is uh, a main target uh, uh, 
and destination for sustainable tourism. We have a lot of choices to offer besides the sea and sun model. It is a center of archaeological pilgrimage, uh, uh, hiking, uh, walking, uh, and not only tourism destination. So in the framework uh, of uh, promoting sustainable development and using uh, our natural resources, uh, we want to promote tourism uh, in a sustainable and viable way. Could you give me just a minute because I want to be able to change the slides? Thank you. So our actions are annual and uh, we participate actively in international tourism exhibitions in order to promote uh, the e image uh, of uh, the region of central Macedonia aiming to penetrate the new markets uh, and to maintain the existing ones. This action uh, includes the participation in targeted B2B uh, exhibitions. At the same time, we host and invite tourist operators uh, and opinion, uh, uh, public opinion uh, um, influencers uh, and tourism professionals. Uh, the uh, target of this action uh, is uh, to uh, uh, give uh, all those uh, tourist uh, operators the opportunity to get to know our uh, tourism area in order to promote it worldwide. Uh, so we invited tour operators and journalists and public opinion formulators from Greece and abroad. It is necessary to host them in Central Macedonia so that they get to know this region in order to be able to promote it accordingly. We also have the airline companies marketing support. Uh, that is, uh, we implement supporting marketing programs uh, and programs uh, to promote our tourism des destination in cooperation with uh, airline companies. Um, for example, as you can see, we uh, show a short video of our, of our region during the flight of this specific um, uh, airline company that we work with. Um, we also work together with tourism prof professionals in order to jointly promote uh, the tourism product of our region. Uh, in these actions, uh, we have professionals participating. They come from the fields of culture, gastronomy, and local products. The objective is uh, to enhance and establish the profile of tourism destination of our region, aiming uh, to alternative tourism forms, uh, because we want to expand the tourism period uh, throughout the whole year. We work together with alternative tourism agencies to achieve this goal. At the same time, we organize thematic tourism experiences. We want to create remarkable, uh, unique experiences and theme tourism products in the region of Central Macedonia. For example, the theme tourism routes uh, in the city of Thessaloniki and in the seven regional unities uh, of uh, the region uh, th uh, through the personalized and individualized routes. We work together with the Marketing Greece company with which uh, we um, 
we tried to promote uh, the content uh, of uh, um, travel experiences in selected uh, um, regional destinations. Um, we also use uh, and uh, promote the digital campaign using the discovergreece.com site uh, and the social media of their channels. Our region uh, participates in the NSRF program uh, and uh, we try to create the brand name of our region called Central Macedonia Greece uh, do something great as you can see it on the screen we have a new logo and a new identity uh, destination and a new destination identity and a new website uh, there you can find interactive uh, digital maps uh, too in conclusion i'd like to point out that the sustainable um, development uh, of uh, our region is uh, our strategical goal so that our region will be a tourism destination throughout the whole year for 12 months. That was all I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Papayuanu, for this uh, very interesting presentation on sustainable tourism destinations. So thank you once again. And now we will give the floor to Mr. Evangelos Kiriakou. He always uh, assists us uh, in all the events that we hold. He is an expert in tourism uh, field, and he will talk about destination management for small-scale cities for sustainable tourism development in the case of Via Egnatia cities. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to speak in Greek, okay. Um, I'm going to speak in Greek. So, we will speak about management of destinations. I don't know if we're ready. So, this is, this is a part of a thesis, a PhD thesis, and the research that was conducted in specific uh, cities along the uh, Egnatia Highway. And the whole thing has to do with the management of small-scale destinations. And most particularly, towns and cities uh, with a very specific identity. And that have, and uh, that can develop, they have the potential of uh, developing uh, sustainable tourism. Because sustainability is not uh, an objective. Uh, it, it cannot be measured. It's a, it's a process. And if we reach a specific uh, uh, place, we discover that there is something more, something beyond. Uh, so this is something that we can see through uh, history. In the cities of uh, ancient uh, Via Ignatia, due to the existence of uh, this um, highway, the ancient Egnatia have uh, proved, because we're talking, of course, of, of towns with uh, thousands of years of history. So they have proved that, that they can uh, be cities for citizens and also cities uh, for tourists. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Anatoly Key for the invitation and for the projects that it develops because it does uh, 
help uh, both the Thessaloniki and Central Macedonia as a whole through these projects. I come from Edessa, municipality of Edessa, and uh, many of the slides that you will see come from uh, my city. However, I will start with what Aristotle said about the existence of the cities. So from uh, the city centers, uh, the, uh, the, the the word poli, which means a city and uh, civilization, citizen, all these words emerged from uh, these. And of course, um, uh, we're talking about a structured and um, mix of uh, policies for managing the environment, uh, managing the cultural, environment, the socio-economical environment, and beyond all these, um, even if it, uh, it, is, it sounds strange, uh, what is required is management. And the Agenda 2030 of the U uh, United Nations uh, set uh, this policy, and the World Tourism Organization and the European uh, Directives also started talking about the management of destinations through the sustainable development, based on sustainable development. So uh, this is a very into important topic, uh, the management that is, because many times we say that, yes, of course, we want to do something about the natural environment. We do want uh, to promote the cultural environment. We want to enhance uh, the social environment. However, we forget uh, the way to do that. Uh, so we need people and training and the stuffing of uh, our uh, destination management bodies. Uh, which uh, for the case we're talking about uh, come from the local uh, society, but the same thing applies for the stakeholders. So all these are related to management and the, man and the human resources, of course. So the examples that are, we will present um, come from four towns of uh, ancient uh, Gnatia, Via Gnatia, Edessa, Xanthi, Okrid, and the Korche in Albania, the last one. So we recognize, as uh, it is the case today in the modern Agnatia Highway, that uh, the cities and the destinations that are affected in a specific area are not just, are not only the ones that are located along this network, but also the towns nearby. So we're talking about a corridor which actually uh, involves uh, uh, a, a distance of 100 kilometers uh, the north and south of uh, the Ignatia Highway. So all these areas are affected and um, this is something that uh, 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 is not just today, but uh, ever since this, uh, in the antiquity. There have always been travelers across the Dignatia Highway. Uh, here you can see a, an animal that uh, crossed a very important instance in order to uh, serve as a gift, a gastronomical gift, gift, because his owner wanted to participate in a fe feast. Um, and uh, the traveler back uh, then used the uh, Ignatia Highway that uh, linked uh, uh, Constantino Constantinople with uh, Rome. So, uh, Within this uh, area, there have uh, always there have been uh, very important personalities. Uh, modern visitors uh, can have the opportunity to get uh, information about these personalities that lived in this area in the past. Alexander the Great being one of them, and. Uh, 
this is something that is very important uh, for all uh, destinations. Uh, so a significant element uh, has to do with management. And uh, we will start talking about this because it's a very important uh, it's very important to have an, an entity a cl with clear uh, responsibilities and competencies uh, in order to achieve some objectives. And of course, it's also important to see what are the commitments of this entity in order to reach uh, these, these objectives. Of course, the stuff uh, that this entity has is also important because you are realized that uh, the uh, consultants uh, are not enough and they're not they're not sufficient the entity needs to have um, a permanent specialized uh, staff and also what is also required is uh, solid uh, leadership that uh, knows too well what uh, management of destinations is about and all this, of course, has to be always uh, online. Uh, this has to be done online in order for the stakeholders around the destinations to, to be able to have access, uh, use all these policies and be in line with these uh, policies and the actions held at the, the local level. Of course, an action level and an action plan and a monitoring uh, process are required because as it was mentioned in the previous speaker, a sustainable tourism needs uh, to be developed across the year, 365 days per year, all seasons, um, that is, uh, and uh, of course, sustainable tourism also needs uh, to uh, ensure that two thirds of uh, the tourists move uh, uh, on their own. So imagine that uh, how, how you guys travel uh, and you will understand what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, all the intermediaries uh, have been eliminated. Uh, we only use internet uh, in order to make our bookings, uh, to find information, etc. So the individual uh, tourism seems to increase, to gain ground. And this is something that needs to be taken into account by all destinations in the near future. Another important element that needs to be taken into account by the destinations and by the human resources managing them is the fact that uh, the travelers need to feel uh, like uh, at home when traveling. They do not like to be considered as tourists. And that is why the Airbnb philosophy has penetrated to a great extent uh, worldwide, because the reality, the, the real reasons why people choose it is not the low prices, but uh, the fact that it gives the possibility to citizens to live like a real citizen and experience uh, uh, a city just like as if he was a citizen of the citizen. This is also a very important element that needs to take, a bit, to take into account. So what, um, uh, when it comes to management of destinations, so what we need is a solid tourist information system that needs uh, to uh, work as, as a welcome uh, center. This is uh, the center uh, in Edessa, which works as a DMO. It works uh, throughout the year because, of course, it cannot close on the weekends uh, since most of the travelers come to the city in, in the weekend. So it needs to have a physical and, of course, electronic uh, presence because, as we said before, travelers also um, in, in, 
need uh, uh, information online. So it was a great challenge for me to participate in a digital exhibition because the people that wanted to uh, to contact me from the United States, for example, due to the difference of time, uh, made me wake up uh, late at night in order to have an appointment with them. Of course, um, the guests, the visitors, uh, must always be the aim for the destination. So we need, as a destination, to do our utmost to facilitate them. Uh, so the, um, there are some uh, cards, uh, the uh, city cards, uh, that allow us uh, to associate our actions, our experience, and uh, to ensure that the theory can become practice. This is something that needs to be done at the level of destinations in order to facilitate the visitors. And uh, maybe also at a level of the region or an, uh, a country. Of course, there are many actions that can be undertaken, but what is very important is uh, the agreement that will be reached. So the city of Xanthi uh, developed a sustainability sign uh, at three levels. So through a specific commitment process, the businesses and the bodies of the city take some commitments in terms of sustainability and quality. The Q4X has been established. This is a sustainability label, which actually sets the, uh, the principles uh, of a sustainability process based on the four pillars of uh, this process and of course uh, all these works uh, through training uh, uh, ongoing improvement using the environment in order to achieve a very effective uh, uh, um, promotion so apart from that uh, there are some other processes uh, for example through uh, uh, ongoing studies about what visitors uh, need and wish what we, we found uh, that uh, what always concerns uh, the state are the votes uh, therefore uh, the political leadership however uh, the political leadership uh, must so also consider the reviews of the visitors. The visit, there are some destinations that are not even aware of that. They, the visitors make reviews on a daily basis about the cleanliness, about different things. So it's very easy for someone to get feedback and uh, find it very important uh, information about some destinations. Uh, therefore, the accessibility and uh, the networking have uh, both a physical and a digital uh, aspect. And this is something that the management needs to bear in mind. Here you can see the ancient Ignatia, Via Ignatia, close to Kavala and Xanthi uh, cities. Today, of course, the, the information uh, must be online. Uh, we're talking about information about trains, routes, uh, accessibility in general. Of course, what is very important today are the airlines, uh, especially with the low cost companies. And it's very important for a destination to be close uh, to uh, a route or to an uh, airport or to try uh, to, to do something in order to be accessible. Uh, now, the local society Uh, is also involved in that. We saw what happened today, for example, in Germany with the floods. And also, uh, and of course, uh, this uh, affects uh, the people that 
uh, has an impact on the people that wish to visit an area. Therefore, it's very important for them to obtain information through the management uh, of uh, the cities that will create a positive image about uh, these destinations. And the critical issues need to be communicated with both citizens and visitors. Apart from that, there are many other issues uh, related to the crisis management and climate change. With the help of Anatoliki, many efforts were made to reduce CO2 emissions, greenhouse uh, emissions, and uh, other actions. I don't want to get into detail. What is very important is that every destination tries to do things. Uh, for example, currently in Korche in Albany, they are trying to build a hydroelectrical uh, structure. And this is something that has already been, of course, uh, done in other destinations many years ago. Uh, but depending on the needs, uh, the cities try to develop and evolve. Um, another important element is uh, the natural heritage. Uh, best example is uh, the Ocrid Lake. Uh, it's an uh, international uh, destination protected by UNESCO. And uh, it is an area that has commitments, needs to fulfill some requirements. And recently, um, some illegal constructions around the lake were demolished in order to, to keep uh, the uh, UNESCO label. That means uh, that uh, the management of destinations uh, needs uh, to focus uh, on the such things. Of course, in this case, we're talking about a very strong commitment. And uh, it's very important to protect destinations. So there are many examples. I uh, will now move on to the management of the natural heritage and then the natural environment. And uh, what is very important is uh, to harness the natural environment. Uh, the management of destinations uh, is not about not touching, but it has to ensure that all the negative adverse effects will be minimized. Here we have the Pozar Natural Spa at a uh, distance of 90 kilometers from here where people can go and enjoy both cold and hot water in the nature in a very sustainable way. And of course, uh, the, the, the cultural heritage where, of course, history, you know very well that in, every, in all cases, it, uh, it, it is um, transformed to the storytelling, the micro story, something which is very important for visitors who know, who in increasingly know that each uh, state entity faces history in a very different way for uh, its uh, own reasons. And the visitors, of course, are mostly interested in micro history in order to see, to, to discover the history of us, the region that is in, that, that interests them. Uh, the, to re, the, the destination management needs to analyze this history in order to improve, as we said before, uh, the benefits and reduce uh, the negative uh, impact. Here you see, uh, well, we have a nice stories uh, about the bazaars that used to be organized um, along uh, the Ignatia. Here is a picture from the Corche Bazaar. Of course, we need to be clear, uh, as this very important part of uh, tourism is uh, economic development, but of course we should not only look at the economical growth with, 
without looking at the social benefits. Tourism is can tourism can be uh, exercised in very different ways. So take a bike um, uh, or in another way, depending on them. Um, on the money he has and of course uh, the benefits must always go back to the local society through actions held in nature and due to the pandemic uh, we realized uh, that um, uh, nature health and um, uh, well-being will prevail in the near future so there are many different activities that can be developed with gastronomy for example and uh, on the four pillars that we mentioned a very important uh, thing is networking networking is necessary both at the level of destination that is an internal networking but also an external networking that is we need to follow the example of the cities of the ancient via Gnatia, which did develop uh, develop as individual cities but they developed uh, just because precisely because they were along or close to these road axes um, networks of course today uh, are also can also be digital uh, so every destination must understand must be aware of the importance of uh, this uh, networking and um, as a conclusion We can say that Via Ignatia existed before national states and borders existed. The, this city, the existence of these cities in Via Ignatia uh, proves that we need to take into account the things that these uh, cities did across history and um, competitivity, co competitiveness is something that we need to consider in combination with complementarity. We always need to have in mind that uh, uh, the uh, life quality of the citizens uh, um, is uh, also important for the life quality of the citizens. So there is a tool that is called uh, Victoria Victoria one this is uh, the ancient system that used to uh, grant um, uh, convey messages in a road uh, axis like via Gnatia. in this system uh, on this system there are hundred questions about the destinations we're talking actually about a questionnaire which leads in detail, which leads to all the, the stuff that we mentioned, that is uh, the, and, uh, the natural environment, uh, the human, uh, the man-made environment, and all the things that need to be, to be taken into account in order to develop uh, policies that will ensure sustainability. I'm open to questions uh, during the break. Thank you very much uh, for the for the attention. Thank you, Mr. Kiyaku. Mr. Kiyaku is a great tourism manager, and uh, he always gives us the best conclusions for uh, sustainable tourism. Uh, he mentioned that uh, the connection between Constantinople and Rome uh, was called Egnatia Dos. This Egnatia Dos passes through Thessaloniki. Okay, it's one of the main avenues that we have here. And uh, we have, uh, since we're now trying to, to build our metro, uh, we have found 
uh, a lot of uh, these uh, ancient uh, ruins, which was uh, actually uh, the path between uh, Thessaloniki and Rome. And uh, this is one of the reasons that our metro has been delayed for now. <laughs> OK. Uh, yes. Is Mr. Halalambos Vasiliadis and uh, Mr. Francesco Filippi. Uh, Halalambos is, of course, uh, one of our great collaborators in Anatoliki, and he will talk about the transformation of fascinating met towns to sustainable tourism destinations. Okay. Good morning to everyone. I'm Haralamos Vasiliadis, and uh, I want, uh, on behalf of Anatoliki SA, to welcome everyone of you in uh, Thessaloniki and uh, um, in uh, the second international seminar of the SAS Towns project. Actually, it is uh, the second big milestone of the project. The first one was the international seminar organized in Faro, Portugal, by uh, make it better and the University of Algarve uh, with uh, a great uh, hospitality in Portugal. Uh, my presentation is uh, separated in two parts. The first one uh, is related to the project SAS Towns, the partnership and uh, the goals of the project. And uh, in the second one, Mr. Francesco Filippi is going to present the methodology of the project. So. Regarding the SAS Towns project, uh, the SAS Towns is about enhancing sustainable tourism attraction in small, fascinating Mediterranean towns. The priorities of the project are uh, to protect and promote the natural and cultural resources on the Mediterranean area and developing a more sustainable and responsible tourism in the Mediterranean area. The partnership consists of uh, 10 partners from seven different countries. From Italy, it is Anti -Lazio, the Lazio Region Association of Cities and Municipalities, Anti Lazio, and the most beautiful villages of Italy, BBI. From Spain, we have Musol Foundation and uh, the Federación Aragonesa de Municipios, Comarcas y Provincias, FAMPS. From Portugal, we have the University of Algarve and uh, the Association for Innovation and Social Economy, Make It Better. From Slovenia, we have the Business Support Center grants. From Albania, we have the Association of Albanian Municipalities. From Croatia, the Iceland Development Agency. And from Greece, uh, the host organization of the Second International Seminar, the Organization for Local Development, Anatoly SA. So, uh, the charm of the Mediterranean space resides in a large spectrum of factors, natural, hit, historical, cultural, etc., but as well in its uh, fascination, fascinating small towns. These are being preferred as tourism destinations for an increasing number of visitors, favoring both economic growth and the general development of the territories they are uh, located. The challenges uh, are that in an uh, unprecedented global uh, emergency context with severe impacts on society and specifically on tourism. One of the challenges of uh, such towns is the participatory construction of local action plans for sustainable tourism. The challenges that uh, every one of the partners uh, has to face uh, is associating small towns to jointly govern these processes promoting concrete measures to improve the local tourism sector performance, supporting entities in their adaption and uh, recovery during and after the pandemic, and uh, protecting and uh, preventing the collapse of local resources and their extensive anthropization. The goals are to develop, test and uh, transfer good practices on local tourism planning and uh, management that uh, prevent the decline of uh, the small Mediterranean villages. 
and uh, also encouraging a sustainable tourism model and innovative and responsible services aimed at national and uh, international visitors and uh, tourists. So, the concepts uh, on uh, which uh, the methodology of the project has been developed are the total quality management, the tourist uh, destination life cycle and the sustainable development. Regarding the first one, the total quality management, it is a model of uh, the involvement and managing of uh, the services of uh, uh, the tourism sector uh, related to the continuous improvement, the total involvement and uh, the integrated management. Relate, uh, regarding the sustainable uh, development, uh, the methodology uh, which uh, Mr. Francesco Filippi is going to present after is um, uh, it has been developed according to the 17 sustainable uh, goals of the agenda, UN agenda for uh, 2030. And uh, the uh, methodology has been developed uh, also uh, according to the destination life cycle of the Butler's model. Uh, regarding to which uh, we have six stages uh, related to the development of tourist destinations. The first one is the exploration, the involvement, the development, the consolidation, the stagnation, and finally the aim of uh, the local action plans that have been developed by partners, the rejuvenation of the small Mediterranean towns. Uh, the involvement of uh, the local stakeholders and uh, of the pilot territories has been uh, um, a, a really a, a really big uh, thing to deal uh, from the partners uh, in the pilot uh, implementation of the project and um, we try to evolve the civil society private entities experts and consultants regional entities local authorities but uh, more about this uh, are Mr. Francesco is going to tell you, you. So, Mr. Francesco, you can continue with uh, the presentation of uh, the methodology of the project. Thank you for your attention. Good morning. Thank you very much for attending the second international seminar of the Sustown uh, project. And welcome, everybody. Uh, well, I will summarize uh, in a few words the methodology that we have applied in the 19 uh, uh, small fascinating towns that uh, we have uh, worked with uh, since uh, November 2019. At the beginning of the project, uh, the main our main purpose was to support these uh, small fascinating town to rejuvenate uh, them as a, a tourist destination uh, in order to avoid the risk of the tourism decline that was uh, in November at the beginning in November uh, 2019 at the beginning of the project was only a provision. Of course, as you can imagine, the pandemic changed dramatically the framework uh, in which the project has been developed. Uh, 
at the beginning we wanted to, to rejuvenate this, this uh, tourist destination, uh, promoting, uh, of course, uh, diversification and uh, de-seasonalization of the tourist uh, uh, flows. Um, to do it, we prepared in the first uh, months of the project uh, a first, uh, an initial version of uh, met the methodology to be applied in all the 19 uh, pilot uh, municipalities that you can uh, uh, find in this, uh, uh, in this uh, map. Um, one of the first uh, action of the methodology was uh, a stakeholders mapping in uh, each one of uh, the small fascinating towns involved in the Sustown project and the creation of uh, a local action group. Uh, let's say that the participatory approach was uh, one of the most important features of uh, our methodology and of our project. We considered since the beginning of the project that uh, all the stakeholders, civil society organizations, uh, tourist companies, uh, uh, of course the local authorities, uh, uh, needed to be involved uh, strongly in all the process of, uh, of the project. As you can uh, imagine with the, the pandemic, it was not so easy to, to reach this uh, strong involvement. But uh, I think that all the partners uh, managed the situation and uh, could involve the stakeholders, uh, even if uh, not uh, always in face-to-face -face meeting, because it was not possible. Uh, most of the, the stakeholders adapted and uh, joined uh, a lot of uh, Zoom and other online, uh, online sessions. So the project could uh, guarantee, uh, even in a pandemic situation, this participatory approach. Uh, we worked uh, with the local action group to elaborate uh, um, the local action plan for the sustainable tourism in each, uh, in each pilot uh, municipality. Uh, of course, it is uh, based uh, on uh, a classic model, let's say, of uh, local planning, the, the methodology, but uh, it was enriched uh, with uh, several let's say, innovative tools that uh, in some cases uh, we have uh, also taken uh, by other projects, from other projects. Uh, let's mention, for example, for instance, uh, the synergy with the CREA Innovation Project uh, and where, uh, thanks to the collaboration with this project, we could adapt to the Sustown project uh, some uh, creativity tools that uh, supported the stakeholders to uh, think out of the box uh, when planning uh, the local action plan for sustainable tourism. We really wanted the stakeholders to uh, invent something new that could uh, contribute to rejuvenate uh, the, the pilot, the, um, the small fascinating town that were the, our pilots. Uh, we have been working uh, several months uh, in, the, in the pilots to elaborate the local action plans. And uh, when we have, when we finished with the local action plan, uh, we considered that uh, the project uh, um, should have a, a even more concrete impact in the destination where we were working. And uh, in that sense, uh, of course, uh, totally um, aligned with the, the priorities of uh, the local action plans in each pilot uh, uh, small fascinating town. Uh, the partners have elaborated tourist packages, sustainable tourist packages, of course. Let's say that all the local action plan and the tourist packages are based on the sustainability uh, pillars that uh, my colleague uh, Chara Lampos has already presented. And uh, these tourist packages uh, were elaborated also with a participatory approach. approach. Let's say that uh, in some cases, uh, in some pilots, it was quite new for the stakeholders to sit around the same table and uh, discuss on the future of the tourism in these pilot municipalities and discuss on how to collaborate to produce integrated uh, sustainable tourist packages. In many, in many municipalities, it was not new. It, they were more, let's say, used to do this, uh, this, uh, uh, these efforts, but in some cases, it was totally new and it was a challenge. Uh, to make agreements uh, and, uh, and synergy between different companies, uh, etc., and the local authorities to produce the, the tourist packages. 
Uh, these touring packages are, have been also object of uh, marketing plans, that uh, strategic mar marketing plans that were elaborated in all the, the pilots, and uh, now is up to the is up to the um, pilot municipalities to implement concretely implement uh, the um, the marketing plan marketing plans. Let's say that in some cases we also managed uh, we also could uh, design and implement uh, some destination marketing plans. Okay, in, in some pilots, they had also uh, this, uh, this output. Of course, the, the pandemic, as I mentioned before, changes dramatically the framework in which we have been working this almost two years of uh, project, three of duration of project. Uh, now, the, the key words uh, are very different than the beginning, uh, at the beginning of, uh, of the project. And uh, let's say that uh, the, the pandemic uh, uh, changed uh, a lot of the tourism trends. Uh, in some cases, uh, some of these tourism trends were already present before the, the, the pandemic, but the COVID-19 made them uh, uh, make the change uh, quite fi faster. In that sense, uh, during the implementation of the project, especially during the preparation of the local action plan for sustainable tourism and the preparation of the tourist packages, uh, the Sus Towns project, all the partners adapted very quickly to the new situation. And uh, uh, if at the beginning uh, the main purpose was the rejuvenation of these uh, um, uh, destinations to avoid the tourism decline, uh, due to the, the pandemic, uh, the project uh, converted and uh, have had uh, two main um, purposes. On one hand, to consolidate these interesting trends, for example, the tourists now pay more attention to sustainability. The tourists pay now more attention to small uh, destinations, not crowded destinations, that are all trends uh, quite favorable for our uh, pilot uh, destination. In that sense, the project want to consolidate these new trends because uh, they contribute to diversify and uh, to spread the, the socioeconomic uh, impact of the tourism uh, in, uh, in a wider territory. And also the project, uh, I think, that uh, could um, connect our uh, pilot destination to this new uh, new tourist trends. I mean, uh, thanks to the project, of course, and also because our pilot municipalities have done a big effort to do it, uh, I guess that uh, the pilot uh, small fascinating town of the Sus Towns uh, really uh, are uh, able to take advance, advantage of these uh, uh, new post-COVID uh, uh, tourism uh, trends. So, thank you very much for the attention. Thank you, Francesco, for your very excellent presentation. Our uh, next presenter is our project officer, Ms. Pascal Fovola-Gaye, and uh, she will be joining us through link to make your presentation. Ms. Pascal, please, you can use the Zoom. Yes, hello, good morning, do you hear me? I think so. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. So uh, thank you for welcoming me today. Um, yes, the, the system project is uh, one of the projects on sustainable tourism that the program is founding. And uh, indeed, uh, the program has uh, used part of its funds to, uh, to support the development of uh, sustainable tourism in the Mediterranean area. So today, I will speak from the Interregmet program point of view on this thematic. Okay, just uh, the, the just to give you an overview of my point today, I will first provide some uh, figures to prevent briefly uh, what uh, has been done so far. I will talk uh, then about the uh, the actors in the tourism thematic, and we will see the future orientations of the program for the tourism. Uh, where it is to be implemented, meaning the the cooperation area and how 
we intend to articulate uh, the new projects to be founded. Uh, now for the for the figures, we had uh, 11 uh, calls for proposal between uh, 2015 and 2021, and we approved uh, 142 projects. The sustainable uh, tourism objective is uh, highlighted, as you can see, uh, because it is the biggest one tackled uh, in this period. Uh, so it is the, the sector that has uh, attracted the most partners and interest. Uh, we had different type of uh, actions implemented, uh, for instance, the, the, to re reducing the seasonality, addressing carrying capacity, uh, improving social well-being, all that the tourism can uh, uh, give to the territories. Um, of course, we had other thematics, but uh, today we are talking about the tourism. So for that was okay. The, um, now for the the actors who uh, participated, we had uh, 177 partners from 13 Mediterranean countries. And here you can see the, the different types of organizations we have. Um, it is quite varied, uh, even if some categories are a little less uh, represented, just like the SMEs, for example. And um, all those uh, these projects and the partners are also supported by an um, kind of umbrella project that gathers the different outputs, uh, communicates on the results, and uh, helps to bring the stakeholders together. Uh, on the website of the thematic community, you can find more details. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it is written below on the slide, uh, the, the address of the website. Uh, you can find, uh, in particular, um, the catalog of project outputs that are working in the same uh, thematic as you do, uh, the policy fact sheets and recommendation, and again, uh, the, the search, the MED database. So a lot of work is done uh, for the tourism, the sustainable tourism, and here you can find uh, uh, good ideas and good results and tools and so on. So now, uh, what is next? Uh, because this was for the period in 2014, 2020, but we are now opening the new period uh, for 2021 and 2027. And for the, um, the, st the sustainable tourism is still a major concern in Mediterranean and the program will have a special approach on this topic. Uh, as you can see, the main goal is to contribute to the transition towards a climate neutral and resilient society. And we will have four missions, as you can see on the slide. Um, the first one will be more focused uh, on the policy objective of the European Commission on innovation and circular economy. The mission two will focus more on the policy objective of uh, uh, on biodiversity protection. The third mission will tackle the policy objective on climate change. And the thing is that the, the fourth mission that we have will be transversal. It, it's the one on uh, sustainable tourism, meaning that it will be able to uh, address all the policy objectives uh, given uh, by the European Commission and selected uh, by the member states for this program. Uh, each call for projects will be detailed uh, in the terms of references, uh, but sustainable tourism will be systematically integrated. So this will provide more opportunities for, to re for the, the actors to develop new strategies, action plans, solutions, or create new partnerships uh, on this matter. Now for the, the cooperation area. Um, we had uh, previously 57 regions uh, covered from uh, 13 Mediterranean countries, and now we uh, grew up. Um, we, we will cover now 63 regions from uh, 14 countries. Uh, Gibraltar from UK had to with withdraw. Uh, 
uh, from the program due to the Brexit, but we are welcoming uh, two new countries, the Bulgaria, the, the entire country, and as well the North Macedonia, also the entire country, plus three uh, new regions from Spain, uh, namely Castilla-La Mancha, Extremadura and Madrid. So uh, this is for the regions that were um, where partners will have the, the opportunity to get funds for the project. But another important point is that the projects uh, are encouraged to work with uh, associated partners. Uh, even if they do not get funds, they can still benefit from uh, any cooperation. So this way the, the results can benefit uh, a wider area for, um, than the program area. Now let's talk about how we are planning to do all this. Um, for the calls for projects that will target uh, the smarter and green med priorities through the missions that I mentioned, we will have uh, uh, different type of projects. First, we will uh, uh, search for what is called single module projects that are uh, studying projects to generate knowledge, testing to uh, test common solutions and transferring projects that are more to uh, disseminate the results. On the side of this, we will have the strategic territorial projects that uh, will answer specific needs on uh, identified territories. For instance, uh, um, to bridge the, the digital divide between rural and urban areas. Um, these projects will combine the phase of uh, studying, testing and transferring. And after this, we will have a, a big part on the governance as well in the Mediterranean. And we will have uh, calls for projects uh, focused uh, on this. And there will be two types of projects. As you can see, it's the thematic community projects that uh, will establish conditions for synergies and coordination between the previous projects that I mentioned and also make the link with the institution in the, the, the Mediterranean. And as well, we will have the big uh, institutional project that uh, those one will support uh, institutional coordination between regional, national, European uh, authorities. Um, and also uh, with the initiatives and strategies in the Mediterranean. They will work on the dialogue in the Mediterranean area uh, as well on the sustainable tourism uh, topic. Yes, the, the first call uh, actually uh, for now is planned to be launched uh, in the beginning of uh, 2022. And it will concern those projects on the governance uh, in the Mediterranean. You can find the, the complete scheme of the program architecture, as you can see below uh, the, the, on our website. Um, Oh yes, sorry, I forgot to say, that was my point as well. Uh, here in the rectangle box, you can see that is the Interreg Med world. But uh, we also want to uh, open it to uh, and to work with other programs, strategies, initiatives. And this, is, will, be, this will be searched uh, in our calls for proposal, just to try to widen our impact. And um, okay, so the, I was saying the, the first call will be launched uh, in uh, January. Uh, for now, that's our plan. And you can find more details because here on one slide, it's too heavy, but you have more details on our website. And finally, uh, yes, this was a, a presentation uh, of the program actions on sustainable tourism in the Mediterranean. Uh, but is, as you've seen, it is possible to widen the framework and uh, cooperate with other approaches launched and uh, other partners. So um, yes, my last word will be grab the opportunity. And thank you for your listening. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you, Mrs. Pascal. Thank you very much for uh, the next presentation of what is going to be in the, until 2027. It's very important for us and for our uh, to know what we, we would expect uh, in the near future. Thank you very much. Our uh, next uh, speaker is um, from the University of Thessaly. Is uh, Mr. Harry, uh, Harry Kokosis and Mr. Spiros Nyavis. They are uh, representing the sustainable tourism for sustainable towns. I would like Mr. Nyavis to link in the Zoom and make his presentation, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, can you see my presentation? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, Sorry for that. Um, okay, I'm trying. Okay. Um, I'm Spiros Navis together with uh, Harry Kokosis. Uh, we have um, uh, uh, prepared a presentation about the, the, the sustainable tourism for sustainable towns and how uh, these relationships ha uh, has uh, evolved in recent times and uh, its implications uh, for uh, planning, uh, especially for urban planning and tourist planning uh, too. Uh, I, I, we will have a, a, a slightly academic approach. So we will uh, present uh, the views and the role of the sustainable tourist community, which is the horizontal project of, uh, of uh, uh, the sustainable uh, tourism uh, uh, community of uh, of the indirect met project. Uh, so, it, 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 in a sense, uh, it will uh, complement uh, what Pascal uh, presented us uh, just before. Um, so, we have in order to understand this uh, relationship between urban uh, places and towns and tourism, we have to see the enabling factor. So, these arise uh, both from the demand side and from the supply side. The demand side. Uh, uh, refers to tourists. Uh, people are now, uh, due to urbanization, are now more familiar with city life, enjoy cities and towns. Uh, uh, the economic development uh, lets people to spend uh, more, uh, more money for tourism, and uh, all these technological advancements uh, uh, made it possible uh, to, to, to lead people to, to go to smaller towns to, with low cost carriers and the other means, uh, transport means. And of course, we see all these platforms, bookings, and uh, uh, to, that give us uh, a plethora of uh, preferences. Uh, from the other side, the supply, um, due to urbanization, we have new uses and new places uh, and new tourism areas that arise. Uh, uh, in many cities and towns uh, all over the world, uh, the tourism uh, provides opportunities for income uh, and jobs uh, generation. And uh, through to these technological advancements, uh, now smaller towns are also in the map, in the global map, uh, and uh, can uh, make uh, online campaigns and booking. And of course, we have sharing and bundled services like Airbnb, Airbnb Uber, and City Passes uh, that helps. Uh, people to 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 visit uh, um, we can see that uh, the, the 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 towns uh, to the town tourism and the city tourism gains momentum uh, and we see that this is uh, especially a phenomenon in uh, in the mediterranean as you can see be between these uh, seven years between 2013 and uh, 2019 uh, towns and uh, suburbs um, have uh, increased their uh, percentage, uh, their proportion in the tourism uh, flows from 33% to 38% in Mediterranean. So this is actually uh, five points uh, higher than uh, the average um, uh, of uh, the European Union. So towns are gaining uh, momentum. Uh, and but the situation uh, among uh, uh, the, the, the Mediterranean countries uh, uh, has some uh, differences. Uh, you can see here that um, uh, nearly uh, four out of seven uh, countries considered, like Malta, Spain, Italy, and uh, Cyprus, 
towns are the dominant uh, hosting areas uh, in uh, of, of tourists in Greece and uh, in Croatia. Uh, the, uh, these countries are dominated uh, by um, by the rural areas, especially for because of the beaches and the beach tourism. And only France uh, has uh, um, uh, is dominated by by city tourism, but uh, also uh, it's more balanced. Uh, and with this uh, development, uh, we have also the pressures. You can see here in the Mediterranean how uh, the, 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 the coast uh, is uh, getting uh, denser uh, in August due to January. You can see here in January that we have some, uh, some uh, pressures in, uh, in Madrid, in Rome, but in, uh, in August, uh, you see that uh, many many places uh, are now red, and uh, we are speaking about uh, 60. Uh, looking at the tourist density, we can see places with over 60 uh, persons per square kilometer. When the average uh, density of uh, residents uh, in European Union is uh, 100, so many places more than double their uh, density, uh, and in uh, the summer especially. And this is uh, detrimental and, and has an, uh, negative consequences for the carrying capacity. And uh, I, ha I have you here an example, uh, a very nice example, which shows that this is happening in the last 15 to 10 years. You can see here the, um, the ratio between beds and residents in uh, Venice. Uh, and you can see here that uh, uh, we had uh, in uh, 2008, we had one bed, uh, about one bed for uh, 10 residents, but now we have eight, and uh, most probably in San Marco, in Venice, in the, center, in the city center, we have three beds. Mean, that means three tourists for each resident. So this is a trend that uh, put uh, pressures on uh, on our towns. And this, uh, this has uh, many effects, cultural, uh, I, I will present here only the, the, some instances of uh, the economic effect. You can see here uh, the, the, the problems that the tourists may, uh, may, may bring to the housing situation. And uh, you can see here the share of people living in households uh, where they have to pay more than 40% uh, percent of uh, their uh, income. Uh, okay, Greece here is a champion, but we can see here that this is mostly seen in cities. This situation is mostly seen in cities. Uh, only in Malta uh, and Croatia is the, is, uh, the other way. Um, so uh, with tourism, uh, pressures uh, also come. Uh, and uh, I have you here an example how the, the household income is related to, to the rental, uh, to, to the rent that uh, people should pay and you see here that rent significantly exceeds uh, the development of the income of uh, people uh, residing in cities. And then uh, with pressures, uh, they come, uh, we have the protests and we have seen marches in, in many cities, in Venice, Barcelona, uh, and many protests that say that we want our, 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 our life back and uh, we have to, 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 to keep at least a normal uh, way of life. And then, uh, because of the protests, we have also seen that we have to respond to this. And we have many regulations now uh, arising in many places. Uh, Valencia banned uh, all the, 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 the RMB uh, from uh, places with nice views. Uh, Croatia put uh, a cap on the, on, the, on, the, on the number of tourists to, 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 to go to, to the city center, to the historic center. Venice has set a fee. And also in Sardinia, we have the fee in the beach uh, because people were stealing uh, the sand from, from this uh, beach. Okay, so these are problems that we have to, 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 to regulate. And then uh, when, when somebody thinks that people were, are stealing the, the sand, it, it comes to my mind that this uh, uh, quote from Chief Seattle that it is one of the first uh, ecological considerations in the history that said, take only memories when you go to, uh, to, to place, when you visit places and leave only footprints. But we mean this footprint, this kind of footprints and not the carbon footprints that are increasing um, 
in the in the, the in the latest uh, years. So uh, sustainability target has emerged because we everybody saw that we have to regulate, we have to plan, and uh, we had uh, many. Uh, this also mobilized the academia and many frameworks came in order to help uh, uh, towns to, to, to plan. And uh, we start, uh, this is a 20 year situation now that is still evolving and we try to, to, to see uh, frameworks in order to engage everybody. So we have here uh, the framework from peers uh, with uh, spatial and thematic considerations, what type of, of of uh, thematics should the uh, plan concentrate and uh, in which spatial scale. Uh, and then we have this uh, framework uh, from Edwards at all that, that they, they understood that when you, you, you bring tourists in small towns, uh, you will have a cultural impact there. And you have to, to, to measure it in order, uh, to, uh, in order to, to, to make it more smooth, smoother. And um, now smaller towns, uh, are, are more exposed to globalization. Uh, it is the same with farm. Everybody who works with farmers in smaller areas, in uh, rural areas, now we will understand that, uh, most probably have seen that uh, farmers are asking now, uh, what is the price of the future of the corn? Th uh, how is the stock market doing in, in USA? Things that uh, were never considered before. Now we are opening to the globalization and together with globalization comes the cultural impact. So, to consider them and scientists try to, to to understand them provide frameworks and help uh, decision makers and then we have to engage all the stakeholders uh, i saw the the, the presentation uh, for the SAS towns which uh, takes uh, such an approach and this is uh, very promising and of course we, we move now to more integrated frameworks in order to to, to take into account all uh, the, the the issues uh, that uh, may uh, affect uh, this uh, relationship with, uh, between urbanization, uh, urban places and uh, tourism. Uh, but the, the, the most, um, regardless of the framework, uh, the, the, the consensus should be achieved and people uh, should be engaged. So there are uh, some virtue cycles of sustainable development with processes, targets and, and stakeholders incorporated in them uh, a place in order to 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 address all the the, the, the potential pressures of tourists should uh, engage the, the the local community but also the tourists uh, and a common understanding should be achieved and uh, in order to to to, to have a, a, an informed and uh, open decision making process and then we move to act we have move to actions and but also we have to monitor in order to to be to to, uh, to to become better and better uh, through the time passing, and and then uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, this cycle of sustainability and responsibility, every and this applies to everybody, uh, to all stakeholders from the industry, from the, the local community, from from tourists, from uh, uh, tourism suppliers. We have to, to to keep in mind that we have to become more responsible in order to achieve sustainability. Uh, so uh, some some good examples, some good practices of acting is uh, to engage, is to 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 make some uh, stakeholder identification. This is crucial. I think that is done in uh, the SAS towns uh, project. We have to build focus groups. We have to discuss. Uh, we have to have open consultations and implement campaigns for rising responsibility both to locals and tourists. Then we have uh, to, to a common understanding. We have to implement from from the academic side, but also from the decision making side, uh, stakeholder analysis. We have to keep them, uh, and uh, we have to understand uh, the needs and challenges uh, of uh, each uh, type of stakeholder. And then we go to decide. We have to, to have well informed decision making tools, and then we have to, to draft strategic and operational plans in order to implement the vision. Uh, of uh, of uh, uh, a town, and then we have to to to, to have a destination management schemes. We have to diversify uh, in order to to be able to be competitive, which is one of the key targets of uh, such towns. And uh, we have to valorize unexplored assets uh, to develop slow tourist models and uh, enrich our off and shoulder season uh, product offer. 
uh, as um, uh, an alternative to, to, to mass tourism places. And then we have to regulate supply and demand. We have to set the limits. We have to give incentives to come to, to lower seasons and penalties. And this, these are things that ha are happening. And of course, we have to, to use the technology. We, we have to use uh, the new means to draft marketing plans and target the touring segments that will help us to, to, to achieve our goals, to become more responsible. There are a lot of responsible uh, uh, market segments now, people that uh, want to help destinations uh, to keep their culture and their physical uh, and uh, cultural environment, like Interpeak. And then we have to monitor, we have to establish monitoring frameworks, we have to, to develop and maintain indicator systems and uh, provide tailor-made information to various stakeholders. But we, we have to be aware because when you try to, to, uh, to, 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 to diversify in, in time and in space, when you have to keep more balanced flows, you will have uh, to, comp to, have, to do a compromise because you will have uh, to, 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 to leave uh, some uh, of the expected overnight states out. Uh, you have to have a more a smoother uh, tourism uh, uh, income uh, inflow. And then about monitoring frameworks, we have to be very careful because not every not every framework is uh, uh, is compatible with uh, the needs of all destinations. You see here a, a survey implemented in the horizontal uh, project uh, that see, that. Uh, evaluate uh, the, 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 the various frameworks uh, about uh, in their uh, ability to be used in uh, various different scales. And then we have to see how we are going to use the sustainable tourist development frameworks, how we are going to, 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 to because they come with many roles, we have uh, to, 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 to be careful uh, how it's going to be instrumentalized, okay? everybody should be devoted in order to, to get the most of this uh, of these uh, frameworks and uh, i close uh, with uh, with an indication of what tourism uh, sustainable tourist community does in uh, for towns and the responsibility um, and uh, you see here all these uh, uh, pilot cases uh, evolving in in mediterranean and we do in the low level, the spatial level, the pilots here you see in Greece. And this is from the first phase because uh, projects now we are uh, we're having more projects ongoing and we still enrich all these are new uh, uh, pilot cases that are still ongoing. So we will have a lot of pilot cases in, in towns. And uh, I will give you some examples of tools that you can find uh, in the engagement uh, target. We have the consumless. Uh, awareness rising campaigns they have a uh, very well drafted uh, uh, guidelines for for this to for any destination to to do that uh, we have the alter echo uh, mediterranean uh, identity preservation uh, and how to valorize it uh, the guidelines and uh, we have uh, the tools for helping uh, uh, stakeholders to decide. We have the estimate carbon footprint calculator and the carrying capacity also calculator of Alter Echo. We have the focus groups established by Tourismet, which is a, a project that uh, uh, looks to, 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 to boost fishing tourism. For the acting, we have the emblematic uh, slow tourist model. They built some very nice eco journeys in mountainous areas and towns. We have the Medfest. Uh, culinary experiences. They have very well uh, drafted guidelines uh, to uh, how to build and uh, the local cuisine and uh, and uh, capitalize on it in order to build some uh, new tourism offer. And of course, we have tools for the monitoring uh, because first the, the community uh, uh, has a, a, an environmental uh, stance. Uh, to the connection between tourism and uh, development. And we have the core evolved sustainability toolkit that could be implemented and uh, adjusted to any uh, needs of destination. And the Safe Tourism Observatory, which is an online observatory, you, you can go there and see how, how, how your destination is doing, how, how your city is doing or town uh, against all uh, the other. And so, uh, you can see here that we have this uh, catalog of tools that Pascal also 
referred to and uh, and uh, the search the met that you can find a lot of useful tools and uh, outputs uh, to, to 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 build some literature review for your uh, for your case studies and for your projects and whatever uh, because it's uh, devoted to, to the med uh, area and uh, i will close i will finish my presentation uh, with the COVID. Uh, of course it's uh, an issue that should be taken into account uh, there are implications for small towns they the, the towns the small towns may, may gain momentum because people avoid uh, mass uh, tourism areas um but we will see if this trend um, uh, continues uh, but also what what should be uh, kept from the COVID is that if we if if we make tourists to, to believe to embrace the the, the the responsibility with masks then it, it is there is hope to, to keep this responsible stance both for tourists and for locals so if we if we become more responsible uh, from the COVID situation, it will be great, uh, I think, uh, for uh, preserving and securing a, a more sustainable uh, development of uh, tourism in towns and uh, and uh, whichever, uh, whatever uh, spatial level. So thank you. Uh, I don't know if I was in time. Um, if you have any questions or whatever, thank you very much for your invitation and uh, wish you a fruitful uh, well, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nyavis. Uh, it's uh, it's the first time that uh, the University of Thessaly collaborates with us for the same purpose, of course, for the sustainable tourism. And uh, we hope that we may continue this cooperation in other events also. And we appreciate your your collaboration in this event. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, we have uh, finished the first part of the of the presentations. Uh, I would like to know if there are uh, any questions for our uh, presenters here. There are two uh, microphones on the right and left. If uh, Yes, you may go and uh, ask a question. If you want, please uh, use the microphone so that everybody can hear you. So, and uh, if the people in the Zoom section want to make uh, questions, they also can raise their hands, ask the question, and uh, we will answer it here. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we have uh, a coffee break outside. Please go ahead and uh, serve yourselves. And uh, we'll be back in about 20 minutes. Thank you.
to show the others. <laughs> municipality, the municipality of Volvi, the father of the mayor deceased today. So that's why he, he could not make the presentation as in, in the agenda. Uh, so we, we will try to speak to him later if he's available. All right, so we will start now with the pilot territories of the sustainable tourism destinations. We have here the municipality of Castel di Tora, from Italy. Mr. Giovanni Paolo Viola is here. You are the first on the list. <laughs> To go, yes, the field. Uh, Calimera, buon dia, buenos dias, dobro. Eh, Mire Menges for our Albanian friends, uh, buongiorno to everyone. I'm uh, Paolo Viola from uh, Castel di Tora. I'm uh, not from the council, from the city, but I'm a local operator, a stakeholder. Um, I'm from Rome originally. I moved from Castel di Tora a few years ago, where I manage some activities. I have a brand, the name is Turano Experiences. Turano is the name of the valley where Castel di Tora is, and I manage, uh, I'm a hiking guide, professional hiking guide. I am a tour leader. I one of the authorized guide by the council to the visit for, to a ghost village that we have in front uh, of the city. And I, have, I am also a vacation rental manager. I manage some apartments, rooms in the, in the area. And uh, I also offer experiences on the two main worldwide, uh, worldwide platform as uh, Airbnb experiences or TripAdvisor Viator in the, in the place. I'm here, I, I, thanks for inviting us. Thanks to the Anci, Anci Lazio and Ravignol that organized the, the project and the, the Borghi Più Belli d'Italia, Mr. Fiorello Primi that uh, invited us to, and of course, also the council of Castel di Torre and the mayor. I'm here to, you, you know better than me, the, all the process, so I, don't think, I, don't, I will not um, talk about the process because you very well know. Uh, I would like to share with you what we had from the project, the, the results so far, and the next uh, targets. <clears throat> I helped when we, we knew the, this SAS Town project. I get involved uh, personally and I try to convince, to involve the other stakeholders of the place. We are in, we are in a very small uh, city. This is the picture of Castel di Torre in the valley. It's a very small city. It's not a city, it's not a town, it's a very small village. We call it in Italia Borghi. Probably there is no translation in other languages less than 300 inhabitants in a small valley. Um, uh, 
we are just uh, one hour out of Rome, that is our strength, but sometimes it's also our weakness. Um, <clears throat> so the target was to get involved the other operators and to convince them of the, um, the opportunity of this project uh, and to build, the with the target to build a network between operators. Just a few words about the place where uh, we are. So we are in the valley. It's quite famous also thanks to the, um, the media because it's been a set for many advertisers. It's been uh, shown on the national uh, regional media, TV. It was the picture of Castel di Tora was the, uh, when we had the expo in Milan 2015, we, the picture was the Castel di Tora Borgo. <laughs> we are just one out of the room. Uh, we have a natural landscape because we are between uh, in a valley with a lake between two chains of mountains. One of these is also a reserve, a, na a natural reserve, regional reserve, 3,500 square meters. There are borghi, there are castles. One of these is also a national monument since 1928. There is fresh air, good air, that is an important uh, tool in, in, this, uh, in this period. And so many outdoor activities could be possible from hiking, because we, our valley also crossed by three multi-days uh, Camino, not famous uh, as uh, Santiago or Francigena, but they're increasing uh, the number of visitors. You can bike and you can get horses, you can horse, ride horses, and you can also enjoy the swimming activities on the lake. And of course, we have good food. <clears throat> but we have some problem because we are so close to Rome, four million inhabitants, and uh, in around one hour and a half driving from Castel di Torre, you can reach five million people. So, so far, 90, 95, we don't have the right number for right figures, but 95 of the people that come, visitors that come to the valley, is day trip is not really tourist because they leave the morning from the home they come the, the main target we call it in italian mordi e fuggi mordi bite and then run away to another place so the target the, and also the, um, the season is very short it's concentrated in the peak of the summer and on the bank holidays the easter uh, christmas and a few so we have two target that is enlarge the season to improve the services and to increase the number of, self, of the tourist services offered to, by, to the visitors. Uh, thanks to um, this project, uh, <clears throat> um, we, after, with some effort, let me say, we convinced the other operators, other stakeholders of the, of the area to get involved. Uh, so thanks, uh, we have the, as, the other villages, we have uh, some lessons that during the pandemic period wasn't uh, so easy to manage. So we have uh, e-lessons, so we have also um, the, some creative workshop in an in innovative way and uh, it works, uh, they have been worked uh, very well. <coughs> uh, <coughs> the visitors, uh, <coughs> uh, this at the end of this project, so we are almost at the end of this project, thanks to the formation, the, the teaching of these, these models. And uh, we, thanks to also tour operators, we, we have been able to create uh, some tourist uh, packages. So far, we created three, four tourist packages. Uh, <clears throat> uh, split the four, uh, segmented by markets, so one for family, one for outdoor enthusiasts were for um, and also trying to get him to, to involve small artisan farms local farm to visit them because for at the moment there are many operators that they offer service but they they have a service that could could be sell as tourist service but they are not very well organized it's uh, themselves <clears throat> We are, we are still at the beginning of our development. We are, uh, <clears throat> we, so we have a lot of uh, uh, a road to do in, uh, in front of us. <clears throat> and uh, this is the main packages that we created. One is multi-thematic, that it means cultural and uh, also landscape. One is uh, for family, so we, you can visit farms uh, with donkeys, animals. One is a uh, sport adventures that, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you can hike or bike or all, all the other outdoor uh, activities. 
And the last one is about enogastronomic uh, branch <clears throat> because there are uh, some bakeries, some restaurants that are starting to offer also uh, courses, courses for uh, Italian kitchen. Of course, these courses are mainly focused on uh, foreign uh, customers, foreign people that we missed uh, in the last uh, two years for uh, the, the pandemic uh, period. Uh, now we have this package ready, ready to sell. So we have some steps in front of us and there are more, there are a lot of interest in this area because apart this project, there is another project that we are inside is uh, always uh, held by Interreg Med. The, the name is uh, Med Pearls. Maybe some of you have heard about it. The aim is also to create other tourist packages. We just won a national band, a regional band, to create a DMO. Uh, we had the news a few weeks ago, so in the next year we have um, a lot of work to do to create a DMO uh, with the target that this network of operators will, uh, will become stable and uh, could improve the, <coughs> uh, the number of tourists. The uh, next steps could be to have uh, an our own uh, website with a uh, unique billboard of events, also a, a, a catalog of experiences, a, a, a touristic brand, and uh, once we are ready on this side, we could, uh, we could start to promote it, uh, the place on the web, on the social uh, media. Uh, this is the main, uh, so we, we we, we just to let you know in the past three years ago I, I personally tried to create a network between operators with stakeholders but i wasn't a success due to the resistance of the people that uh, wasn't uh, ready let me say but once we thanks to the learn the, the lessons that we had by this project uh, we made the, the first step so we are we <clears throat> we are ready to make uh, further steps so I hope that I convinced I convinced you to come to visit uh, our place. So looking forward to hosting you in uh, Castel di Tora, and uh, arrivederci. Grazie. Thank you, Giovanni. Last time, I mean, next time I will go to Rome. I'm sure we'll visit you. Okay, Castel we'll let you my business card later. <laughs> I'll make sure I will visit you, your place. Thank you very much. Uh, next uh, is the sustainable tourism in the Culatra Island from Portugal, Mr. Tau Freire y Jose Rui Rifreire y Jose Nunes. Good people. <laughs> So, good morning to everyone. Calimera. Calimera. I would like to start by thanking the, the hosts of the event. I also would like to, hope to, to welcome the, the partners that are responsible for the, for the pilot region where I come from. That should be the University of Algarve, the association Make It Better, and the municipality of Faro, presented here namely by Prof. Professor Emanuela Rosa, José Nunes and his crew, and Mr. Daniel Queiroz. <coughs> so, sorry. so what is the Colato Island? Colato is part of a group of four islands residing on the south of Portugal that joined, that they do create what is known as the Natural Park of Rio Formosa. And we are basically uh, sandbanks. We are not a typical island, we are just sandbanks with its own fragilities. And uh, so sorry, I'm not used to these kind of things. Okay. okay. So, who is the people from Colatra? We are basically a community of 800 people, around 800 people. That should be about 350 families. And we depend entirely, economically speaking, from fishing and shellfish farming. 
we are very aware of the of the responsibility of being environmentally sustainable for it is so very easy to lose sight of such and destroy our economic activities tourism is a huge of huge importance for ourselves tourism may be a, a quite huge danger for the environmental sustainability of the islands we think the program interreg met for coming and selecting us as a region, a pilot region. We are here to offer our best. We we call your attention for the need of uh, studying the, the carry capacity of the island. We do not have infrastructures for huge amounts of people coming, especially in the peak of summertime. More than 5,000 5, people arrive at our island daily in summer. That is not convenient. I thank you for your time. If Haristo and now I'll let Mr. Jesus do the presentation. Thank you so very much. Well, hello again. Thank you, everyone, for the opportunity again to show Colatra, to show our pilots in Portugal. My name is José Nunes. I was, well, let's say, the helping coordinator that accompanied the communities in Colatra Island, the municipality of Far, which is the pilot area, really, and another pilot in Portugal, which is Cuba, also we are represented, but we are not going to present it today because we did it in the first international seminar held in Faro just one month and a half ago, more or less. So I will go trying to be fast because they told us that we have 10 minutes. We are Portuguese. For us, 10 minutes is multiplied by many other numbers. But just a short introduction on what is Faro in a short video. There are no words in the video, just images. Yeah. yeah, okay, I could sing it. Just music on the background, so it's a pity. Né? Tá com ele. Né? Would it be possible to check the sound? Well, uh, always this uh, Murphy loss, we are used to it, so don't worry. Um, probably we'll be having another short video by the end. So if we have sound, it will be fine. Well, as uh, my colleague Rui Freire just said, this we're talking about an island that's quite particular. It has this 4.4 uh, uh, square kilometers, more or less 900 inhabitants. And for instance, during the summer period, the island can receive like the numbers uh, registered this year in August, uh, around 7,000, so which means uh, multiplying by eight uh, the number of people inside of the community, which means a big problem for the locals, for the people that live from those resources, which are terribly important for them because they are a fishing community. They are settled in the isle for almost 200 years now, and they, they have been fighting against uh, 
uh, let's say, uh, in nice words, the system, because also uh, from a few years ago till uh, 2019, the island for urbanistic issues was considered illegal. So all the people living in the island were not allowed to live there because the highland was in uh, 80s classified as natural park, which is a Ria Formosa natural park, which is, um, uh, as you can see in this picture, um, uh, geologic maritime formation, very important, um, uh, constituted by several barrier islands, sandy islands, protecting the seashore, but creating an incredible ecosystem there, and the resources from this fishing community naturally come from the fish and the resources from the ocean and from the ria that they can take. And of course, this pressure uh, makes a lot of noise there, a noise in terms of environmental pressure, waste management, water distribution, whatever you can imagine. So some pictures about uh, Culatra, well, they are very famous. Of course, those that had the opportunity to be there uh, in Faro last uh, July could enjoy the wonderful oysters produced and the seashells and the fresh fish and, well, somehow the um, ecosystem uh, uh, assets that were shown, the gastronomy, whatever. So they are really challenged. This We were choosing this pilot because of these characteristics, because not they are not needing uh, at this time to be rejuvenated. They need to be protected somehow from uh, the pressure that comes from outside and it is uh, somehow um, making uh, the life of those inhabitants and of the uh, sea economy a bit difficult. About some benefits and successes from participating in Sustowns, of course, uh, I think this is more or less homogeneous. We will see in the next presentation from my colleagues, from other per partners and pilots, that more or less this was happen. Well, yes, like Francesco said in the first part, we had the opportunity here to create a, um, a space and a time for stakeholders to get together, which is quite rare. I would say in Portugal, probably not in Portugal, not only in Portugal, and it, this allowed the institutions on the island jointly with the municipality of Faro, which is, let's say, the local authority engaged on this, to create a vision for the territory. And this is, uh, let's say, the starting point for a work that we expect to be much more fruitful in the near future, and still lot work to, lots of work to do. And uh, also, as uh, Rui uh, said before, one of the main challenges is really to uh, control and uh, somehow access the carrying capacity or the charge capacity in the island. Because, as you can imagine, if uh, you have a place for 900, when you have 7,000, the things are not nice. And the sustowns can be one of the tools that we should be using in the next few years to control and to somehow monitor the um, effects of tourism in the island. So yes, they together, these stakeholders in several meetings, workshops, whatever, uh, they created a, a lot of tools, you know, the tools, we have designed a, an action plan, and this action plan um, had these um, six main issues uh, that we're trying to tackle uh, in, the, in this strategy, promoting governance, first, first of all, one of the most important, uh, coordinating the networking and the action between the stakeholders, uh, giving capacity to the human resources, creating and promoting new tourist packages, because uh, this is, as I told you, Ria Formosa, lots of pre uh, pressure in all Algarve region coming here, it's more than one island, and all of this is like a paradise for sailors, paradise for um, sport fishing, paradise for all, only the people that likes to go to the beach and enjoy the sun in the, in the ocean, and um, this means that the tourist products, or mostly the tourist packages that are available, we cannot say that are, they are sustainable. So what we're trying to do is create these uh, two other um, tourist packages that really can um, be, uh, let's say, sealed with something saying sustainable, but global sustainability. I mean, in all aspects of the concept of sustainability. And of course, this uh, also to like bacteria, you know, to, con to, to spread into some contagion of the sustainability principles and philosophy to the visitors and to the tourists. That's one of the goals as well that we have inscribed in this plan. 
We can keep with further, we can, you can see some pictures of some results. For instance, the parties in the island now use one unique glass, not any longer in plastic. We have made it in uh, aluminium, which is um, probably the best uh, material to, to respect the circular economy. It's a kind of uh, forever material. And so we are trying step by step to create this you know, um, enrollment in people, enrollment in the players in the island, and mostly to convince and to capacitate the visitors and the tourists to understand that reality. And that's why in the uh, upper right corner you have this uh, tourist or the uh, responsible visitant manifesto, which is a charter of things that everybody that visits the island should respect and should understand, for instance, among many other. So, yes, involvement and participation was of one of the uh, bigger benefits and successes that we have there. As I told you, lots of things uh, are still to, to be done in the near future, we hope. We need uh, many, uh, let's say, strengths to, to go on because the Highland, because of its particularity, has seven public institutions with, uh, um, how do you say, jurisdiction for all stuff. So if these seven public institutions are not articulated, everything you want to do, it's like a mess. Something that, like putting a uh, um, a panel for information could take one year of, uh, you know, authorization, sign, uh, etc. So you can imagine how bureaucratic it can be when you deal with seven different public institutions that are not necessarily connected with each other. So yes, cooperation, vision, and responsibilities. We're trying to somehow develop these uh, mechanisms to promote uh, uh, the sharing of information and discussion between all like in the presentation from the, the University, University of uh, Thessaly. I think uh, it was talked about this, just keep on going with the focus group, make it permanent, and that's something that we uh, are envisioning for this project and for this uh, pilot. The sh sharing of the views of these main pillars um, for a sustainable tourism on the island, assessing the tourism impacts uh, at all times, so in a continuous way as well, and uh, again, calling all the people to uh, promote this joint creation of solutions because the problem is common to everyone. The stakeholders, the private companies uh, tell exactly the same to each other, but they do never get in touch. So this is, again, the opportunity for them to do it. As for the tourist package, we have created two different ones. Let's say one, well, the global name of this is Collateral, where the life of waters find harmony. And um, one, ah, there is an important um, peculiarity in the island, there is no formal accommodation there because it's forbidden to build whatever. The only buildings allowed at this uh, moment in the island are the houses of the fishing community. All the rest, it's illegal. So there is a big process, it's a fight. Silvia Padini, it's the president of the Residents Association, she's there. She has been fighting since uh, 1987 against uh, all uh, these barriers and obstacles and they still do it but of course the priority is the identity of this fishing community and the uh, well um, the, the good uh, living conditions for them and then the other priorities can come like tourism like w uh, many other uh, economical activities sectors so um, this package has two different uh, ways with no accommodation. The accommodation, of course, will be provided in the municipality of Faro, which is a big city with lots of alternatives. And, uh, well, our partners enjoyed somehow these uh, Faro offers during July. Uh, but in the island, it's quite difficult to have the sleep. So it's like one or two day tours, enjoying the fishing community and participating in fishing activities, but as well enjoying the nature and the biodiversity of this natural park and if uh, natural reserve protection uh, special protection zone uh, moisture interest zone international interest zone whatever they have most 20 uh, environmental classifications in the island so you can imagine and the other segment let's say it's for sailors because also the Kulatra island is uh, let's say very well known for uh, international sailors that stop very near the island with their boats and so they can sleep on their boats and still enjoy the uh, tourist package that we have developed and mostly as i told you based on nature and based on the um, main economical sector in the island which is the fishing and the seashell collectors and the aquaculture like the oysters and um, many other uh, bivalves that they produce with extreme quality there one minute that's almost impossible 
Um, well, sharing the learnings, well, this, take joint responsibility for a more sustainable, fair and responsible tourism, promoting cooperation, creating products that are really sustainable, developing a participatory plan for tourism, uh, rethinking the importance of the load capacity of the island, which is one of the priorities, and of course, take the first, taking the first steps, implementing a real action plan for sustainable tourism. In one word, we could say that uh, um, uh, this is the biggest learning, you know, protect a good place to live from the dangers of being a good place to visit. And just to finish, we have a short video because we have many challenges inside of the island. And one of this is a crowdfunding campaign we just launched. So please point your mobile phones and give a hand to this new challenge in the island about the Sculatra fish market. Well, there is no... Okay, I will sing. There are some subtitles. This will be spoken in Portuguese on the background. Sorry, something went wrong here. Good. Well, and yeah, 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 but just uh, finishing. Okay, so if you want to give a hand, please visit our websites, whatever, or take this note. And thank you so much in my name and uh, who is name. Uh, you will be welcome anytime in Culatra Island and in Portugal to, to your visits and tourism approaches. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We have the Municipality of Montuiri in Spain, Miss Paula Maria Amengual. Nicolau? Good. Sechname. <laughs> start? Yes. This one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Paula Mengual. I am a heritage technician, and I'm here on behalf of the Montuiri Council. Uh, both the mayor, Joan Berger, present here, and I uh, want to thank the organization of um, Interreg Mediterranean Sustained Project and especially the uh, Fundación Musol for having invited us and for uh, giving us the opportunity to show you in such a special place the project we are working on. Well, uh, Montuid is a small town. Uh, of just over 3,000 inhabitants located in the center of the island of Mallorca. Uh, the Balearic Islands, in general, are, are well known in terms of tourism for their beaches and for the long sunny seasons combined with their historical offer focused uh, on leisure and entertainment. But, uh, well, if we think of Mallorca, uh, surely what is best known internationally are its coastal areas and maybe Serra de Tramuntana, which is World Heritage Site. Uh, and it's precisely in these areas where a more intensive tourist de development has taken place. Um, however, Mallorca has another reality. 
uh, less well known but equally real and authentic and it's the interior of the island or what we know as Espla de Mallorca. In recent, in recent years, Espla uh, has seen an increase in population. Now we are uh, about 40,000 inhabitants since uh, foreigners and Spaniards are uh, seeking a better quality of life. Well, Spla de Mallorca is a region made up of 14 different municipalities, small municipalities, including Montuiri, um, which preserve ancestral customs and a typical landscape of rural and traditional Mallorca. Uh, moreover, Montuiri plays a relevant role within Spla, leading the project that takes into account not only its potential, but that of the rest of the municipalities. Um, there are two factors uh, that unite uh, all 14 municipalities. Uh, one is the agricultural tradition based in cereal crops, and the other one is geomorphology. Uh, as Pla, it presents an almost flat landscape, uh, but uh, only with the presence of different hills that do not exceed 300 meters height, that offer spectacular panoramic views over the region. Well, we think that the true essence of a spla must be preserved, uh, although it should be shown to the world. So it's essential to find a balance between um, the development of tourism and the preservation of the landscape and cultural features of the area. Uh, an alternative to the traditional model, which is uh, based on sea, sand, sun and sex, is needed. And the, this model is exhausted as it's unsustainable. And we all knew that the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted that we need to change this model. So we need another model that combines economic growth with inclusive development, environmental sustainability, social responsibility, and also accessible to everyone. Well, how can Montuiri and the region of Spla contribute to this new model? Through such towns, we have designed a product that links the primary and the secondary sectors. Uh, among others, the charming places in the town in Montuiri are Plaza Major with its church, the old flower windmills, uh, the, the hill called Puig de San Miguel, uh, the local market, as well as the archaeological site of San Fornés and its own museum. In addition, the town has different uh, routes designed uh, to explore the town center, um, which can be done on foot or by, or by bike. Uh, just two notes on the prehistoric town of San Fornés, as it is one of the most um, important attractions of the village. Uh, the archaeological site, the in excavations, excuse me, in that archaeological site began in 1975, uh, but they still continue today. Uh, since then, three talayots have been unearthed. The talayots uh, are these uh, typical Mallorcan megalithic constructions made for different purposes from 1000 to 500 BC. Um, then, in 2001, uh, the Archaeological Museum of San Fornés was created with the aim um, of explaining the evolution of societies that developed in Mallorca during the first millennium BC. Additionally, it contributes to the promulgation of the Talayotic patrimony. Well, um, for the first task that has been carried out to create the, the tourist product is a local action plan based on different meetings between uh, local actors and then move on to the design of a marketing plan, both for, um, focus on fulfilling both the vision and the mission. For the, for the development of this project. The vision of Montuiri, as you can see, is to become the reference tourist destination in the Pla, sustainably developing its tourist offer and allowing the creation of experiences that enhance its attractions and preserve its essence. And the mission is to help Montuiri to consolidate it itself as a reference destination in the Pla following a model of sustainable growth and increasing the competitiveness of its tourism, plus acting as a manager and promoter for the sector in the municipality. Um, for the tourist product we are working on, we have created a brand 
Colors des Plans, which will allow us to advertise new tourist experiences in the region, putting Montuiri as one of the main protagonists. Um, in addition, it's aimed at a very specific audience, couples or groups of friends who seek relaxation, gastronomy, nature, or what is known as slow tourism, uh, as well as families who seek uh, cultural experiences in nature. Finally, uh, it's planned to be carried out from September to May uh, with a stays of four days and three nights. The marketing and communication campaign for the promotion of this uh, product has had as its slogan, Montuiri a tu aire, Montuiri at your own pace. Uh, in reference to the fact that it's a series of routes that can be done freely and at the pace of each one, uh, so no pressures or haste. It has been carried out for six weeks uh, with a specific campaigns for the two uh, segments to the target audience and has been done uh, through profiles of the main social uh, networks such as Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Well, the product, uh, for that product, we have created four different routes, uh, one uh, route per day through the region of Spla. The first route uh, begins in Montuiri with an, an excursion to the hill that belongs to the, the village, is Puig de San Miquel, one of the best viewpoints in the in the Pla. Uh, and in the middle of the morning, we will accompany uh, the chef to the garden to choose the food with uh, which uh, he will prepare a tasting menu. In the afternoon, we will uh, be in excursion through the cobble streets of Montuiri and its old town to finally see the sunset in the Talayot of San Fornés at the archaeological site. On the second day, the plan is to go to Custich, another, another village, on a journey of about 15 kilometers on rural roads from where we can see old fountains and mills. Upon arrival in a village, uh, we will have a ride on horseback through the different archaeological sites too. During the morning of the third day, uh, we will visit uh, three more villages from Espla, Maria de la Salut, Lluvi, and Petra, a route marked by cobble streets, markets, mills, architecture, and colors of Mallorcan doors and windows. In the afternoon, we can enjoy a wine tourism experience in a winery more than 200 years old, and walk through the wine yards and end the day uh, with a good gastronomic experience uh, with wine pairing. And then uh, on the last day, we can live a unique uh, visual experience, watching the sunrise over the Pla de Mallorca in a balloon. During the flight, we can enjoy a variety of snacks of local products. And finally, we can take the road back to Montuiri and reach the Puig de Randa. Uh, to see the sunset with views over the whole island. And just uh, in order to, to end the presentation, just to, to point about what uh, the Sustowns project has meant to us as a small municipality. Uh, we know that Montuiri and the region of Espla is one of the least uh, developed uh, tourist sectors. So thanks to this project, uh, this project, we are able to let the world know Montuiri and all the region, uh, not just in terms of tourism, but in terms of sustainable tourism. So this enterprise has permitted us to create several routes. So these are our first steps done in this area. And our aim is to continue betting on quality and above all, continue betting on sustainable tourism. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, the next uh, presentation is from the municipality of Bled, Ms. Yelena Vidovic. Please take the podium.
Αντώνη, μπορούμε να χρησιμοποιήσουμε present interview, έτσι. Okay. It's working now? Perfect. Okay, uh, my name is Jelena Vidovic. I'm coming from the Regional Development Agency of Gorinska region in Slovenia. Today I will be talking about Blade, and I'm really glad about that. Because Blade is such a unique place that statistically it is more known than Slovenia itself. Um, unfortunately, uh, the mayor of Blade, who joined us on the first international conference this time, could not come. But I have received uh, very valuable information for them, from them. And um, I'm absolutely excited to have this presentation right here with you. And thank you very much for the invitation. Um, okay. Green movement. Uh, Slovenia is a very small country, as you probably know. We have only two million inhabitants. We are the only country who has love in its word, uh, as love, you know. Uh, so um, we decided that we need to have a very unique and different tourism development. Our uh, touristic strategy says that we want to have a sustainable, unique, five-star and active destination, okay? So active because we are very active in sports in Slovenia, uh, green because we sim simply have so many protected areas uh, covered with woods, of course, um, sustainable because we are so small and we have to preserve what we have. Okay. Uh, this is our chicken-formed country, uh, Ljubljana as the capital. You see where Lake Blade is, and it is approximately just one hour from Ljubljana, and uh, the Ljubljana's airport is in the middle between Lake and Ljubljana, just so to, to have the feeling where to put it geograph uh, um, geographically. <laughs> okay. Um, in this very small, I have to tell this maybe about Slovenia, just a few, few, few words. Uh, very small surface, but we have alpine area, we have seaside area, we have panonic flatland, we have uh, caves, so every, every very diverse country in a very, very small area. Short facts about Bled, because uh, today you've heard a lot about the Sustams project and small fascinating towns. So the population is around, around 8,000 people and it has annual overnight stays around 1.1 million. So this is very relevant uh, and the, the uh, touristic flow is very high and this sustainability is very, very important to preserve our natural and cultural heritage as the project itself uh, addresses. So we have around 9,000 beds uh, within 16 hotels, we have approximately 50 or half of the capacities of the beds, and all the others are different kind of um, accommodations. Uh, this is 1,000 years old castle, uh, the most famous cultural heritage in Blit. Um, the little island that you see is the only island in Slovenia because we have only uh, around 47 kilometers of the coast. Um, as I said, in Sustan's project, we are generally talking about preservation of natural and cultural heritage, and the natural sites in Blade are, of course, most fascinating. Um, as I said, this is the only island, and the Lake Blade, of course, is very... Um, has very clear water with many species which can, which can be endangered by the mass tourism. Very shortly about our cultural sites. And now uh, we will go to the strategic plans. Uh, we have, of course, this general strategy of tourism development on national level. Then we have the strategy of the Blade Municipality, strategic plan for tourism and strategic plan for our, our agriculture and I will go further a bit later to this uh, pillar but at this moment let's just tackle tourism we have developed within the project as all the other partners action plan for sustainable mobility 
And within that action plan, we tackled action plan for blade railway and multimodal points in Slovenia. It is a bit different from what other partners have been doing, but in reality, the mobility is the biggest issue uh, when the, when the uh, tourist season is very high in Bled. Uh, okay, this is where we have a few pillars of responsible, sustainable tourism. Uh, these things have grown organically over the years. As you know, we have um, working on a zero waste uh, location. We're working on having drinkable water everywhere around the lake and at all uh, tourist destinations with uh, a lot of promotions so that the water from the pipe is being dr drinking and not uh, bought in plastic, uh, in plastic bottles. Um, when talking about the uh, the, the, the surrounding of the municipality and the municipality itself, we are part of the Trigger National Park. So it's a large part of this area has been included in Natura 2000 project. So you know that uh, the preservation of the nature there is, uh, is obligatory, not just necessary. necessary. Which meant for uh, which meant that we needed to raise awareness, knowledge, and means between the inhabitants and tourists, of course, mainly tourists. Okay, yeah. So building sustainable future for men and nature. Uh, being uh, this much visited, we had to find the right balance. Few words about uh, excellence, the confirmed certificates. Okay, we put twice alpine pearls, I'm sorry for that. Uh, and we, we have many charging points in ma and many awards, of course, uh, as a destination. When we were talking about agriculture before, uh, we've made a local selection of the of the productions, uh, culinary delights, different kind of. Uh, different kind of products that uh, people are uh, producing in Bled under, of course, uh, under one unique brand from Bled, uh, certified, standardized in order to be sold uh, as, as, as something very local. This is a very unique restaurant with a very unique view from the castle of Blade that I've told you before, where these kind of dishes are also served. Description of Blade by the media all over the world, it's a green image of paradise in all season. Uh, that's how uh, people uh, feel when they come to us and uh, this is something that we really, 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 really urge to preserve. And this is the, the reality and the situation with the traffic. Um, this is how the entering road to municipality looks like during the weekends. Uh, we would like to make people use other means of transport to reach Blade for many different reasons. This is why our action plan within the project is really addressing on solving the mobility issues. We would not like to build another infrastructural road or whatever infrastructural investment to make, but uh, there is a plan to make a road around Blade for those who are just passing the destination because at this moment they have to drive directly to the, uh, through, the through the town. Um, on one hand, but on the other hand, we are really uh, working on changing the behavior of tourists by also our tourist packages that we developed and all the other actions that municipality together with the tourism of Blade is developing so that people change their habits, that they come with by train, that they use the multimodal points that already exist to take the, uh, to rent a bike, to rent all the other means of transport and reach their destination. Yeah, so as I said, the recipe is in changing the habits, not building infrastructure. Uh, it is, as I said, planned to have another road going around uh, Bled. So we are working on mindset change, which is crucial. Okay. 
We've been talking about this. It's called Bohin Railway because it's going to Bohin, but uh, it's of course uh, goes through Braid to Bohin and makes a circle around. And we were thinking about having a combination of uh, train with, of course, a car train. This is the situation with mobility. People could reach Triglav National Park and also Bladenbachin, both our pilot municipalities from Venice, from Trieste, from Klagenfurt, from Vienna, from Ljubljana. So all the closest airports uh, are very well connected if this railway would go alive. Closer look to the railway position. Blade is on this triangle on the right, um, the yellow one. Okay, um, so the name of our action plan is Bohin Railway as a means of designing tourist products and contribution to sustainable tourism in the municipality of Plate. Um, I will let you go through the focus one. So we would like to achieve sustainable environment model through the prisma of uh, economic stability. Uh, we would like to have this uh, product, tourist product, uh, Bohin Railway line. Uh, local tourism economy, human resources and organizational structure would be uh, enriched and of course we would protect national, uh, natural and cultural resources. Uh, focus number two within the action plan preparation was of course the involvement of the stakeholders as it was predicted already in the project application form because without the local people being engaged in the, in the tourism project we could not prepare a good strategic document. I'm done, I'm almost done. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, we had the groups of people being very engaged, uh, giving us feedback, checking what we've prepared, many meetings with them. So I think that we prepared something that is very, very useful for our local government and also for the project itself, uh, so that we merged both interests into one. Okay, I will go very shortly. We have tourist packages mostly uh, mostly um, connected to the healthy, green, sustainable five-star uh, experience. As I mentioned before, uh, this is just one, uh, one um, example. And uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Nine thousand, no, eight thousand people. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I, I, said, I said one million uh, stays overnight. One million. Yeah. In one year. Yeah. But it was before Corona time, of course. It was two thousand eighteen. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Of course, with the pandemic, this changes. Yeah. Quite a change, huh? I mean, in relation to the population. Yes, I know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next one is the of the Hello to everyone. I am Nikos Avgernos. I am Deputy Mayor in the Municipality of Aristotle. I am ready to start. The destination, Municipality of Aristotle in Halkidiki, in Greece. Its main characteristics. An area rich in natural rotation, 300 kilometers of coastline between three mountain areas protected by the European Convention Natura 2000, 4,000 plants and herbs in Holomondas Mountain, 404 of them at the Aristotelian Mountain. They are the same ones that led Alexander the Great to recognize the Asian flora. Even richer the flora at Mount Athos, three sea bays with crystal clear liquid volumes famous production of fish and seafood. Strategic vision of the destination. The vision of the municipality of Aristotle is to take advantage of the long history 
the incomparable beauty and diversity of the natural environment and the local culture and tradition of such a charismatic area, unique in Greece and transformed into a sustainable tourism destination. This mission can only be accomplished by the local authorities in collaboration with local professionals in the tourism sector and the local community. Strategic access and priorities destination management and promotion, touristic products and hospitality, cultural heritage and identity, natural heritage and environmental quality, and crisis management. The tourist package. Through the pilot implementation of the project in the municipality of Aristotle, the tourist package referred to pilgrimage tourism where religion meets ancient philosophy. Pilgrimage routes around the land of Aristotle and Mount Athos. This is the Tower of Prosphoreo in Ranupolis. Its product. The alternatively, the green, the Greek blue, the, the gold of convertibles, the blessed air of the mountains, the rainy water pouring into the bays, the wet soil, the white sand, the island Amulani, the smell of the olive trees and wild herbs, the forest and the wood. 300 kilometers of coastline, the longest in Halkidiki. Four unique points, four unique points can be found here. Mount Athos, Mount Athos is the center uh, of the orthodox uh, asketism, monastic life. The birthplace of Aristotle, uh, the ancient Stagira, uh, the birthplace of Aristotle uh, in Olympiada, in the village of Olympiada. The canal of Xerxes in Nea Roda. The traditional village, Mademochoria. Alexis Orbas the famous Greek man and his life in our destination. Zorba the Greek lived uh, in Palohori uh, for 22 years. An ideal destination for religious holidays. Our religious package is linked with several tourism forms. A must-see pilgrimage site. The pilgrimage route. The route to Arnea. The Metropolitan Church of St. Stephen. The Agia Paraskevi Chapel and the Park. The Cosmas at Los Monastery. Visit the chapel on the slopes of Holomondas Mountain. The Chapel of Prophet Elias. Escape visit the Church of Esodion of Sanos. Celebrate Easter in Arnea. The route to Paleochori. The Church of Pamegiston Taxiarchon. Monastic guest quarter Panagia of the Sadwans. The route to Megal Panagia. the Holy Pilgrimage of Virgin Mary, the Chapel Panaguda, the route to Ranopolis, the Byzantine Tower Prosphoreo, the Zigu Monastery is outside uh, of the Mount Athos, shopping monastic items and jewels, the Holy Epitaph, escape visit the chapel St. Theodoron at Nea Roda, mythical Mount Athos. Cruise around Mount Athos, escape visit Amuliani, visit the church of St. Nicholas and the chapels in Amuliani, the route to Ierisos, the Metochi Kakavos, near to Erisos, the chapel 
of Apostle Paul, the Ephemius Varamis exhibition. This exhibition is in the cultural center uh, in the municipality of Aristotle in Erisos. The route to Stratoniki and Stratoni. The chapel of, of Mount in St. Nicholas. Escape visit the chapel of St. Theodoron at Stratoni. The route to Neochori. The chapel of St. Athanasius. The route to Varvara. The church of St. George. The route to Olympiada. The ancient Stagira, the birthplace of Aristotle. Uh, it's an archaeological site in Olympiada. The Holy Monastery Evangelismu. Special Athonian Gastronomy. Take part in the monastic cuisine feasts. Combine it with wine exploration around Mount Athos. We create authenticity. The theory says that the basis for the formation of a unique pilgrimage experience concerns the triptych of authenticity, locality, quality. We have everything. In a destination with towers and churches like a fairy tale, with religious mentality and heritage. This is our brochure. Pilgrimage life is a reflection. This is our brochure. Come and enjoy the Greek Orthodox Christianity in a destination where people revive what they inherited from their parents in the way they define creating myths and legends around Mount Athos, building our future. Thanks for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Avgelinos. The next presentation is for the municipalities of Sale and Velipoja from Mr. Kemal Selku. Selku. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for the Greek partner for very good organization and uh, Komuno of Aristotel for visiting yesterday. So I am uh, Chamal Sheiku. Uh, I work for uh, Association of Albanian Municipality. So let the uh, presentation two pilots of uh, uh, in uh, Albania. One is uh, uh, administrative unit of uh, Shal is uh, the municipality of Škodra. Škodra is uh, in the north of Albania. It's uh, between uh, uh, cross border of Montenegro. But, uh, that Shal is a beautiful place in the very north of the Škodra municipality. Uh, the population there is uh, 2,800, but about uh, 300. Uh, the, this village is uh, 172 kilometers from Tirana and 72 kilometers from the Skoda city. Uh, but we improve the business, climate, existing business there, the increased performance quality, destination tourist, offer increase in coming business, and jobs in the local community. So when I see so we have to say a thank you for the, the project to make to remain lots of things to do. So uh, let's go to another side to agree with, with the Shale unit of the project, meeting of the local government partner, uh, action plan and tourist packet improved by the municipality of uh, Škodra. This uh, one place from the Shal, the did Durham would have said, I think the place where the human beings live, they given me such impression domestic solution from the interior world. It is a spot where the inclusion shield and the river mine, the world will spring, it is banks and feed home of elementary sneaks of position and are the rapid. The sustain project for the shell unit uh, will the area opportunity to resolve this area, translating the action plan tourist packets. So the slogan we can take from the old saying from Skodra side, uh, house of good and friends. Uh, that one table from uh, Shala or the village of the theft. So thank you for uh, this presentation from the Shal. So let's go to another presentation. So is we have to come in uh, seaside, I think. Yeah. The another pilot in uh, Skoda municipality is the Velipoya. Velipoya is in the seaside, just in, uh, between Montenegro and uh, Leja city. Uh, the population there in the 220, it is about 7,000 or maybe 800. The Velipoya is uh, 30 kilometers from the Skoda city and 117 kilometers from Tirana. So another side agreement of the Poya unit project. So we have a meeting, we have an, a picture there, action plan, tourist packet, and approved by the municipality of Skoda. So the good level of the beach, the waste management, a direct connection with the road, 
with Shenzhen Leisure is one is the beautiful place, but everywhere we need another uh, situation for infrastructure or the road to connect between uh, Vilipoya uh, Beach and uh, Shenzhen, another uh, side from the Leisure City. So our target to young middle age, uh, the visitors to find out that the experience in the money expects to the local nurture, history, tradition, and lifestyle. So you see the picture from the young people and gastronomy from the Vilipoya. So the Poya is the 250 sunny days with the diverse landscapes, where is a beautiful sea, sand and river. So, Adiatik with the population of the old Volcano tradition and bull slogan, you are born of the day for enjoying in Velipoya. That it is the slogan for the Velipoya. So thank you from our side. You finish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Seiko. The next one is the municipality of Pesco Costariso. Constanzo. Pesco Costanzo. Is anybody here from? Yes. Mr. Luca Colecchia and Dario Catulo. Sí. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, we are here in, uh, on the behalf of uh, the municipality of Pesco Costanzo. My name is Luca and I'm a counselor for tourism. Uh, he is Dario, counselor for sport. And uh, I would like to give the floor to Dario who explain the, um, something about Pesco Costanzo and his history. And then we carry on explaining different steps of the project. Good morning to everybody. Um, Pesco Costanzo is a little village uh, in uh, Bruzzo region, uh, in the center, of, uh, the center of Italy. And uh, it's a typical uh, Renaissance historic center uh, built uh, in uh, the middle of the 15th century. And um, uh, on, we have a, a, a beautiful, very beautiful architecture, but uh, it is also uh, a good place uh, where uh, uh, you can uh, practice uh, uh, many activity and sports uh, in the winter and the summer uh, as well. And um, now, uh, Luca um, uh, speak about uh, the the step of the of the project. And uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, so here we are. Okay. Uh, project was presented to local stakeholders in June 2020, and uh, more of them uh, shared the final goal of the project. And on December 2020, I and um, uh, the most beautiful villages of Italy club started to collect data in order to define the local uh, action plan. And uh, um, workshop with well-developed uh, area, tourist area, helped the local stakeholders to understand better that the key word of this project is teamwork. Um, it was a, um, a long time uh, work, uh, and um, we realized a tourist package, but meanwhile, other stakeholders realized their own. Uh, tourist package, so it is a, a second goal that this project achieved. 
and uh, on June 2021 the new tourist package was on sale uh, on Borghi Italia Tour Network website and finally on the 6th of July we present to, uh, to the municipality of Pesco Costanzo to the mayor all the cities and stakeholders of course the uh, final action plan and uh, this is the uh, tourist package uh, which is uh, made up of uh, three days and two nights stay and uh, it includes a guided tour of the village historic center of the village and also an hiking tour as well as uh, an e-bike tour and um, a visit to the craftsman shop uh, in the historic center and even a one paint workshop and here you can uh, sport some images of the uh, main uh, square and also Bob Inlay's uh, craftsmanship. There is also uh, a site of the woods uh, in the municipality of Pesco Costanzo. It's called Bos uh, Bosco di Sant'Antonio or Sant'Antonio Woods. And even uh, you can go uh, by bike, uh, you can practice downhill uh, in the um, the mountain uh, resort and what we learn from uh, this project. Um, the most important uh, aspect that we learn is that uh, we have to decisionalize the tourist, the tourist period. Uh, so not only four months of touristic uh, flow, but um, we have to create a more organized and uh, structured tourist promotion. Uh, respecting the teamwork, the key word uh, I said before, uh, in order to avoid depopulation, especially young people uh, nowadays have to go away from the village in order to find a better uh, job position. But uh, this project is uh, the starter uh, for um, a better uh, living in, uh, in, this, in this village and uh, it is possible to realize this goal by uh, keep high uh, stakeholder involvement and also creating an integrated and experiential tourism offer based on nature, craftsmanship, art and cultural heritage. I want to thank uh, the municipality of Pesco Costanzo because they uh, believed in this project since my, uh, before my election and local stakeholders of course. And a special thanks goes to Fiorello Primi, president of the beautiful, most beautiful villages in Italy and uh, his staff, Umberto Forte, Monica Gilocchi and uh, Andrea Vignoli from Ancilazio for their support. And here we have some pictures of the, of the village during winter season. This is the main square. Uh, in the background we can see a uh, 17th uh, century uh, palace. Also this is a ski resort during night and uh, yes, uh, in the background we can see the, the village from the top of the of the, the mountain where ski resort is located. And even in summer, uh, this resort is uh, um, is very good to uh, to see and to visit because uh, you can fi you can find different uh, outdoor activities like climbing and downhill, as I said before. And uh, so thank you for uh, your attention. We uh, wait for you in Pesco Costanzo. Thanks. What's the population of Pesco Costanzo? The population, population. Number? Yeah. 1,100. 1,100. And how many people come? During summer, summer winter, winter. Yeah, the more, uh, more or less uh, 4,000 people. 4,000. Thank you. Thank you very much. This will be there for the final event. Yes, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, really? That's the final event there? Yeah. In Pesco Constanzo? 
Okay. So how do you arrive there? I mean, okay. <laughs> what, what's the closest airport? O Pescara, O Pescara. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay, the next one is the municipality of Graus from Spain, Miss Micol Petrone. Hello, Miss Micol. Hi everyone, good morning, Calibera. I am Miguel, and I'm here today on behalf of uh, FAMP, that is the Federation of Municipalities, Comarcas and Provinces of Aragon. And I will talk about our pilot municipality that is Graus. So, uh, Graus is a very, very sm uh, small town with more or less 3,000 inhabitants located in uh, Huesca, that is a province of the Aragon region, as you can see here. Here it is. And it is the capital of the Ribagorza uh, province. It is located in a very, um, oh, what happened here? It's not working, sorry. Okay, no problem. Tell me. No problem, it's not a problem. Uh, as regards its population, during the last 40 years, uh, it has been uh, losing population, but thanks to tourism in the last 10 years, more or less, this trend seems to be, um, de seems to be decreasing and uh, slightly reversing. But uh, um, this is the, um, the point where the Sustown project uh, is uh, fits in, because we want, of course, um, improve the tourism in this area. So, its potential offer is based on four main axes. The, for, the first one is the nature, natural and sporting resources. This is the, this is the Barasona Reservoir, um, water body that is located more or less six kilometers uh, far from Grouse, and uh, uh, we're uh, housing uh, two campsites and a lot of water activities establishments. And moreover, its uh, location uh, gives Grouse the getaway to the Pyrenees, so offering also uh, natural and uh, uh, winter uh, activities. Then the second one, cultural and heritage resources. Grouse is full of, uh, of art, of monuments since the prehistoric times too, uh, culture, festivals, and so on. Gastronomic resources, I don't know why we can see it well, but okay. Uh, gastronomic resources, Graus is, um, well, is known all over Spain for the is black truffle and also for the longanisa that is a sausage recognized all over Spain and which made also Grouse to be in the, in the business world record uh, book uh, because it was made here during a festival, the, um, the most large sausage in the world. And last but not least, social activities. Uh, here, organizations, associations, hiking clubs, uh, um, uh, hiking clubs, biking groups, organize a lot of social activities converting Grouse into the best place where um, experience the safe tourism according to uh, the COVID-19 pandem pandemic and the slow tourism too with a lot of open space areas. Okay, our strategic vision. So, uh, first of all, we had to identify all the resources available as I was talked about before and uh, um, so that knowing that Grouse is a very well identified inventory of touristic resources, but they are less used and unknown by the public. So we started from an analysis, a SWOT analysis, and we studied the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the territory, 
And as regards trends, we saw that there is a loyalty of visitors. There is a significant, a significant number of second homes, and it is, as I was said before, very close to the Pyrenees. But on the other end, tourism in reality is not the key in this locality, and uh, um, it is located yeah, near to the Pyrenees, but it is between the Pyrenees and the valley. As we got opportunities, as you can see, it is close to several touristic attractions, and uh, there is the possibility to attract second uh, villagers. But on the other hand, uh, there is the, um, a great rise of other differentiated destinations so that could threat of course, the tourism here, and activities offered in other similar destinations. So, uh, in order to fight all these kind of, well, uh, all these kind of threats, uh, we, uh, first of all, involved a lot of actors of the, um, of the, the tourism, uh, of the tourism sector, both public and um, private, and as you can see, we involved members of the local co corporation, tourism technician, information office, hiking centers, hiking clubs, and everything related to it. And we organized some working sessions in the Pyrenees Center, and with the methodology of the work uh, um, of the Cafe Works which is a methodology implemented also in other projects which is based which is typically based on the um, association of public and private bodies and these working sessions had a dual objective identify tourist resources and prioritize them and lay the foundation for building a sustainable tourism development plan so we developed uh, two work packages uh, to respect this, sorry. And uh, first of all, the, um, the main uh, tourism desired is the family one, which seeks, of course, to carry out comfortable and affordable activities in open spaces areas. And other target groups, not, more, not less important, are owners of second homes, new residents, and retired people. We have three different target groups with three different objectives. Owners of second homes to increase the frequency of visits, New residents to integrate them into the locality and into the population, and retired people in order to attack them and convert them into residents. So, in order to develop the project, we followed three steps. So, the identification of people who make up each of the target group mentioned, the creation of direct communication channels in order to spread all the objectives and the uh, sharing and sharing. Uh, the project and uh, step three consolidation of a monthly agenda of the aligned uh, of um, activities aligned with the identified interest of those target groups and last we defined through two critical figures one is the grouse ambassador who acts as a loudspeaker for all the activities and the project manager which is capable of acting as an interlocutor for all the parties involved into the project and for all the parties involved in the communication calendar so these are our achievements in the sustan project in this area and well i think and i uh, hope that everything was clear thank you very much so, so the main activity is with uh, s s slope riding. I mean, uh, on, on the Pyrenees. Okay. Uh, what's the main activity in the winter? Yeah. Ski sloping. Uh, yeah. Ski sloping. Ski. Ski and winter. Yeah, winter activities. Yeah. Ski. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Municipality of Mali Losing from Croatia, Mr. Dalibot Zvitkovic. Yes. Did I say it correctly? Yeah, everything correct. Uh, Good. Including the surname. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, okay. We're very accustomed here because a lot of 
basketball players come. <laughs> so. Okay, you have a long, enough long microphone to hear me. Uh, so, Kalimera, bon dia, buongiorno a tutti, dobar dan, good afternoon to everyone. So, first, let me just thank you the, uh, in the name of the Croatian delegation for the fr friendly hospitality. Especially, it was impressive the, uh, yesterday, the uh, excursions to the Mount uh, Aros. Atos, Atos, sorry. And as we are not the uh, partners, we didn't involve in the partner meetings, we have a lot of time to explore the city. And as the responsible tourist, uh, we also try your local food, local musicians, and the, we have also support your local team yesterday on the game Aris against Panathinaikos. So congratulations on the winning one to null against the Panathinaikos. <laughs> Okay, let me start about the, uh, it's always the first slide about where we are. So, island of Loshin is situated in North Adriatic in Croatia, uh, near to the coastline of the Eastern Peninsula, on the other side of the Adriatic Sea is Italy, above us is, is Slovenia, Trieste, Venice and capital city of Zagreb. Actually, Loshin is not just an island, it's an archipelago consisting of the more than 30 uh, islands. Seven of them are inhabited and the population of the uh, islands is uh, 8,000 people living on the island. But during the summer period, that, that number increased to the 40 to 50,000 people in the peak of the season, which is uh, middle of August. We have the facilities around uh, 25,000 beds uh, mostly in the camping side and the private accommodation, but there is also a lot of uh, residence house. People have their second homes on the island of Loshin. And it's big impact of the tourism of the infrastructure, as the old infrastructure is made for these 8,000 people living, but during the, the summer we have some kind of problem with the electricity, with the water, with the, with the waste, or, or with, the, with the parking, place, uh, uh, parking uh, spaces. And uh, we have, uh, you have also here the numbers about the employment in the tourism. So every second job is in the tourism industry directly. And the income or the uh, contribution to the destination economy is 36%, which is in, in the GDP in Croatia is involving tourism around 12, uh, 20%. So it's much more on the island. That's why we started one project with the EU, EU uh, Commission at 2016. It's called ETIS, European Tourist Indicator System. So we measured all the indicators, uh, 43 of them. They are uh, tourist uh, uh, impact of the tourism on the on inf infrastructure. Uh, why we did that? Because we want not to tourism just happens that we can uh, me, um, when you when uh, when, uh, when you measure something, you can uh, influence on on the impact of, of the tourism. So, and also for the decision makers, for the mayors, for the politi politicians, you may, you have to have the data to make the, the some kind of, of uh, voting or some kind of decision. And uh, on the picture, you can see also the dolphin watching, watching project. That's the project that we uh, developed with the Marine Institute in the, in the Loshin Blue World. That's the project that you go on the sea with the researchers and you learn about the life of the dolphins, how to behave with, uh, when the dolphins is around. And the, uh, this uh, price of the excursion is 50 euro per person, which is not so, uh, which is maybe expensive, but all the income goes to the institute to to uh, to further researchers of, of the dolphins uh, because the last colony of the bottomless dolphins is still living on in around the uh, islands of Loshi, the only existing colony in in the Mediterranean. And this uh, at these indicators, they are divided in, in the four groups, destination management, economic value, social and cultural impact, and environmental impact. Uh, it's very important. We, uh, 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 we, all, uh, we all know that there is impact of the tourism, but we don't know the numbers. So I'll just give you one number. Uh, they, uh, daily spend of the local uh, people uh, of water is 120 liters. But daily spend of the tourism is 240 liters a day. 
that not just include the tourism, but all the tourism industry. So for the pools, for the kitchen, for the garden, so everything what is connected with the tourism. So it's twice, twice much more. Uh, outcomes uh, that we have uh, from this uh, Sus Towns is to design uh, the packages that will not be concentrated to the main season, but to the pre and post season programs. And also with this uh, Sus Towns program, we also have a collaboration with a nearby island of stress. So we make this uh, strategy of developing tourism for the board island for the next five to 10 years. Our vision that Tres and Mali Lodging with their quality and uniques of the tourist offer represent one of the leading sustainable lifestyle and well-being island destination in the Mediterranean. Uh, so our strategic pillar is, is to, to diversify tourism products. So the main products is still sun and sea, but in the future we see also the outdoor, which will be for the spring and the autumn and the well-being, the combination uh, between the health programs and the wellness as part programs, including the, the lifestyles, also the gastronomy and cultural part. Increased uh, environmental sustainability and enhanced visibility. So for this program, we, uh, we choose the uh, tourist package of hike and bike on the island of Loshin. This is that program of, of outdoor, but it's not just including the hiking and biking, but also visiting of the uh, fine sense garden and also museum of Iapoxiomenos. We spoke about that yesterday, that uh, our main uh, culture uh, point is the museum of Iapoxiomenos, that's the Greece, Greece bronze, statue found it in the bottom of the sea near the island of Loshin. It's 2,000 years old and it's very, very well preserved and we built at 2000, I think, 18, the museum which is dedicated to the statue of, of Apoxiomenos. So the only artifact in the museum is actually statue of Apoxiomenos. But to see the Apoxiomenos, you have to cross the nine rooms. They, are, they have some kind of storytelling about the Apoxiomenos, about the Greeks on, on that part of, of Croatia, because it was the point when the people from the Venice and people from the, from the Greece are coming and have the trade. This island was the, 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 the meeting point of the north and south of Europe. And uh, we also involved uh, the uh, other stakeholders from the local agency, culture, attractions, hiking society, accommodation, rental sector, etc. Target are all the groups who are um, active tourism is main motive for coming in the destination. Uh, sharing and learning, what have we learned from this project? But I will quote this last line. The destination is sustainable to the extent that every single member of the community is sustainable. Uh, I think the, the people in the tourism sector, they are very well known about the sustainability, but we have to spread the idea to the older community, especially we are work with the uh, uh, educational uh, institutions like kindergartens, uh, like the elementary and the high school, that they have the uh, this. Uh, it's not just sustainable. It's maybe it's better word: uh, responsible tourism uh, from the beginning. And here on the picture, you can see we planted one uh, uh, pine uh, tree in the kindergarten. It was also with a group of top 100 green destinations. So the Congress was held in the Lush in 2019 at uh, Global Green Destination Day. So we are also the member of the top 100 green destination of the world. And on the end, uh, one visit is 4,000 pictures. That's our logotype. So visit Loshin. Thank you for being hosting uh, us these three days. And uh, I forgot, that, uh, <laughs> I put in a Google translator to thank you, thank you, thank you. And now I forgot Efkaristos. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so Efkaristos uh, for all of you and see you on the Loshin. Thank you. Bye. So you live in one of those islands? In, 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 Excellent. Yeah. Great, great. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so the next one is the municipality of Lagos from Portugal. We have Mr. Nuno Marquez and Mr. Luis Duarte. Thank you very much.
of the Earth. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Nuno Marques. I come from the municipality of Lagos. I come with my colleague Luis Duarte, which is uh, sit, seated in the, in, the audience, in the audience. We represent uh, the Lagos municipality. We are pleased to be here. Um, thanks for the invitation, especially to the University of Algarve for, uh, uh, for that, for this. Um, this is an a, um, a image of the, the city of Lagos in the south point of Lagos. We are uh, in the south of Portugal, um, 70 kilometers from, the, from Faro, which is the capital of the Algarve. Um, 70 kilometers from the uh, airport, the, the, the second uh, most important uh, airport in Portugal. Um, as as uh, we, we, we see, uh, uh, we, we are, we are um, in the, um, the southeast uh, uh, point of the, um, of the Algarve. Um, I'm going to do to, to speech to, to talk about uh, a strategic vision for a tourism anchored uh, development. I'm going to highlight the, the, some of the main uh, ideas, um, what we have to do to achieve our goals uh, and uh, how to, to, to achieve it. So, uh, the first idea, uh, it's important to redefine the concept of mass tourism according to new criteria of environmental, economic and socio-cultural management, decentralizing its activities and differentiating its poles of attraction, abandoning older models based on avid exploration of territories that deal with tourists as, in our point of view, as merchandise. Uh, we need to turn Lagos into a smart destination and how to do it, EL solutions for residents and visitors or tourists, mobility solutions to make tourism accessible and inclusive, tourism data analysis tools, which is very important as we will see, uh, facilitate compliance with health rules, improve efficiency in energy use, enhance the efficiency of water consumption or reduce the environmental impact of tourism activity. Uh, this is uh, uh, um, our Ponta de Piedad visitors data analysis tool. We know precisely how many visitors go uh, and visit this territory. Um, tourists or, or residents who, who choose this, uh, this area to, to, to make some, some sport or walking. This is a, a um, this is a, a um, important bird area. This is a very sensitive uh, area um, for bird life. Uh, other idea is the assumption um, of tourism based on experiences, hospitality, and visiting genuine territories makes it possible make, makes it possible to avoid the cultural environmental distortion of touristic locations. We need to increase Lagos' positive notoriety among new audiences and markets and promote the loyalty of regulars, regulars visitors. How to do it? Uh, create the Lagos Digital Lab, for example. Strengthen the communication in several languages, which is a gap uh, for us uh, still. Involve other agents in a joint effort to promote Lagos as a destination of excellence and promote a more consistent and strategic-oriented communi communication. Other idea is uh, the tourism of the future has to focus on people, visitors and tourists, but also residents. It needs to be more innovative and creative and at the same time more sustainable, including mobility, ensuring increased levels of safety and health care, where its quality will have to be increasingly the focus of both supply and demand. Nature tourism is one of Lagos' priorities. Strategies, strategies of tourism in which bicycle routes, walking paths, and physical exercise practice 
spaces are contemplated, as well as strengthening the improving beach and nautical activities tourism. Healthier lifestyles and moderate exercise may be beneficial for tourists, but they will also mean improvements for residents. Another part of our action plan enhances the quality of tourism in Lagos. How to do it? Attract foreign investments and new distinctive projects. We have some. Um, strengthen the quality of tourist services. Increase the quality of public spaces, very important. Increase the percentage of clean and safe or uh, European tur tourism safety seal warranty for local accommodations which is expressive uh, uh, in Lagos, the number of local accommodations, not classified uh, hotels. Ensure a more sustainable and safe visitation at Ponta da Piedad, and guarantee the concept of sustainability as a synonym of quality. Ponta da Piedad is uh, our postcard. All of you have this in your bags. Um, this is an image of Ponta de Piedad, which uh, some improvements that we have uh, we have done. Walking, a lot of work has already had, have been done at Ponta de Piedad to achieve our goals. But of course, there's still a lot of work to be done in the future. This is now, this is in the peak of summer. In the peak of summer, Lagos um, have uh, um, 1,000 uh, uh, um, uh, tourists and residents, 1,000, 100,000, sorry, 100,000. The city uh, have got uh, 17,000 residents um, and the, the, the whole municipality uh, have got uh, 33,000 uh, uh, residents. And this is what we are starting to build according, according to our strategy. I will compare for you. This is what we have now. This is what we want to continue building. This is the Ponta da Piedad next improvement area. The first, the first one is in your left side of the image. Diversifying demand, the size and diversity of Lagos allows it to be an attractive destination for different types of tourism and for different social and age groups without creating conflict. For example, a young backpacking hostel, tourism who visits, tourists who visit, uh, visits Lagos today can, if he takes good memories with him, come back a few years later to stay in a luxury resort. In fact, we do have a lot to do in the future, but we do believe we're on track to achieve our goals. The creation of a municipal tourism council is very important for the Lagos tourism strategy to stimulate dialogue between the public and private agents, creating synergies so that all contribute to a common objective, improving Lagos as an excellent touristic destination. Lagos, as an increasingly sustainable and smart destination, and still learning from such towns. Thank you. So the problem could be what, like solid waste, Water, what could be the problem during the peak hours? We are using, for, for example, we are using this kind of tools to, to manage uh, carrying capacity or waste, or waste capacity, because it's difficult to, to, to manage all that. <laughs> See, Thank you very much. Okay. We will close the presentation. Close the presentation with the municipality of Volvi uh, because of, like I said, there was a, uh, a disease of the mayor of the father of the of the of the mayor, and uh, people could not be represented today. 
but we still have them on the on the agenda. So it's it's good that we present them uh, in today's meeting, and then after that we will have a, a lunch, which you are all invited, and uh, I'm sure somebody will let us know where where the lunch is. So please, this is Miss Anastasia. You. She is working in the project, Anastasia Lespurudu and Hadalambos are the people who are basically carry on this project throughout this, uh, this procedure. Go ahead. So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, on my behalf also, I would like uh, to welcome you once again. So, following your, uh, <laughs> your path, benvenuti. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos, Tobrodosli, y Mircevini. <laughs> Thank you uh, for coming. Uh, I will be short. Uh, I'm, uh, as uh, Mr. Kosadin said, uh, uh, the municipality, Mrs. Uh, Kikitro Laki from the municipality uh, of uh, Volvi couldn't uh, make it for today. Uh, the municipality was already presented to. Uh, the majority of you during the FARO first international seminar, so I will just uh, uh, go uh, through quickly to remind you the basics about the municipality. Uh, of course, during uh, our uh, uh, study visit yesterday, uh, most of you had the, the opportunity to admire uh, the natural, uh, natural beauty of the area as uh, uh, we crossed uh, most of the part of the municipality on our way to uh, to Mount Athos and the municipality of Aristotle. So, a few words about uh, uh, the area. Uh, it's a, kind of a little bit uh, larger than uh, other municipalities uh, we are we encountered encountered here today. So, uh, there's an area of uh, uh, approximately uh, 700. Uh, 80 kil square kilometers and uh, with around uh, 23,000 uh, inhabitants. But uh, during uh, uh, the summer months, as uh, is common in the areas that uh, combine lake, sea, <laughs> lake and sea, which is uh, our, uh, the famous sea and sound model, uh, the population in the area triples. So the name is of the area is uh, out of uh, the lake uh, Volvi. Uh, which is uh, uh, one of uh, the biggest uh, lakes in uh, the Greek territory. Uh, and uh, also uh, includes Kerdilio, uh, Stratonica, Vertisco mountains, with, uh, which we had uh, the opportunity to admire yesterday. Uh, and has also very long coast uh, uh, in the Stremonic Gulf. Uh, the economy is based on the, uh, all sectors, but uh, the tertiary sector now with uh, touristic activities uh, is uh, really uh, increasing. So, uh, the vision of the municipality of, uh, of Volvi, as uh, it was uh, uh, anticipated through uh, the piloting activities when we tried to elaborate uh, uh, in collaboration with Anatolki the, the action plans uh, is for sustainable tourism development highlighting Volvi's natural wealth, cultural heritage and local flavors. Uh, let me just not you. Of course, uh, the five strategic actions uh, that uh, uh, were elaborated during the action plans, they were presented uh, also by our uh, uh, president uh, in uh, the first uh, welcoming speech. So, uh, briefly, I will go to just name them, the destination management and promotion, touristic product and uh, hospitality, cultural heritage and identity, natural heritage and an environmental quality and uh, of course added after uh, the the pandemic uh, it showed how important it is also to add uh, the crisis management 
what uh, we understand uh, is uh, in this uh, procedure that the Sustowns project uh, gave the opportunity to, to the municipalities that uh, uh, it, it was and uh, should be uh, on behalf of the local authorities uh, the belief that uh, uh, people of the area is the real power. So people living and operating in the area embraced the, in the initiative at first, they joined uh, the local focus group meetings, uh, motivated by the uncertainty caused by the uh, in the community uh, by the pandemic. But after following uh, the interactive processes and participating in the training organized also by Natalie uh, and with uh, the guidance, of course, uh, of our assistant uh, assisting external experts, they were more deeply involved and they actively participated in the elaboration of the action plan uh, with their suggestions highlighting the issues with uh, uh, an insider's point of view. Uh, <laughs> So, come briefly to an end, uh, we also developed uh, at second stage our touristic package uh, with uh, uh, a focus on, uh, on uh, natural tourism. So, uh, uh, the point is that uh, the municipality of Volvi is an idea for holidays, getaways, contact with nature throughout uh, the year. And uh, the tourism package therefore refers to natural tourism on all its branches, including sports tourism. So the, the package is a three-day excursion, uh, starting from the city of the Saloniki, uh, or uh, uh, combined with another excursion, uh, but uh, has a, 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 having as the starting point the Saloniki. Uh, the, with slight modifications, the trip, this trip can be expanded uh, for more days or can be combined with other activities as part of a longer stay. Uh, one can choose between various uh, activities, as you can see in the picture, such as hiking, bird watching, uh, horse riding, cycling, water sports, and much more. Uh, briefly, uh, I would uh, sum up that uh, the project was a clear opportunity. It gave to the different stakeholders living and operating in the area the motive to really have the will and uh, transform the tourist product already available that uh, could uh, easily lead uh, to a tourist decline. Uh, so the, the new slogan of the municipality after the participation in the Sustown project is holidays, getaways and contact with nature throughout the year. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Excellent. So. Any questions, any comments, any anything you're going to share with us? I think we are uh, all happy here. So, and after the lunch, we should be even happier, right? Uh, anybody wants to close the, the meeting? Okay. So, thank you very much. Please proceed to the lunch and uh, we'll talk there. Thank you.